have you, so, I, I, and we're all human, have you ever regretted anything you've said on air? I have never regretted one thing I've said on air. And that's the God's truth. Could, could I, and, 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 and again, we're all human, and I get it. You took a little heat in the MMA world for the sumo style comment about Nate Diaz. Do you want to take that one back? Because you can't do sumo style in MMA. You know that, right? Okay, I don't remember it. Help me out. What did I uh, say? Recently, you were talking about the Nate Diaz Conor McGregor fight, the first one. You were talking with um, with Shannon, and you said that that Nate yep. used sumo style attack on 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 Conor to get him down to the ground. And MMA is a form of no, a I, hybrid I of I don't know. Art. Sometimes, uh, yeah, you know, I just I meant that he got him on the ground, and obviously, in the second fight, Conor's number one priority was not to be taken to the ground. Right, and he wasn't right. He, he held, you know, he, he actually held on to the cage to stay upright. And I don't think he went down once, did he? I don't think he got him on the ground one time. And I think Nate probably outweighed him, certainly in the first fight. By what would you guess? By five times? Did he outweigh him by thirty or forty pounds? No, 40? no, no, no way, no, no way, so? no, 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 no. I don't know. That's uh, that, know. that's a myth I, I that think... Dana White likes to put out there. No, maybe, maybe okay. five pounds, maybe. Nate Diaz is a hundred fifty pounds. Pound? Yeah, not not nowhere. He's in, a lot taller. Taller, yes, taller, yes. But but Connor's a thick man. You've seen him, right? You've been next to him. Yeah, yeah. He's a thick man. For sure. Don't believe that yeah. that story about him being 30 to 40 pounds. You're better than that. You know that. Uh, I don't know. What up, what up, everybody? And welcome back to yet another Sound of Violence podcast. This is Pulver yet again, back with my co-host, Chris Medaffer, who's opening up some uh, Founders Centennial IPA, which is, uh, is their 20th anniversary IPA. It's yeah. Pretty good. Yeah, uh, I might as well take a sip now. Cheers, bro. Let's see. Yeah, that's solid, dude. It's a big IPA. It's, I think, around 7-something percent. It's uh, definitely yeah. East Coast. I'm actually double fizzing right now. Uh, the other beer we are unofficially sponsored by this week That's is right. St. Archer. Thanks again to St. Archer for being here with us, of And course. being awesome. Uh, this is their Citra 7. Uh, Citra hops Citra, with... Yeah. Citra, seven with uh, Idaho 7 hops. Yeah, it's fucking fantastic. Real it's good got IPA. Super tropical, but it's still got like a good, uh, like sharp hop bite to it. It's it's a really really clean IPA. Um, but if you guys don't know, we are a podcast that normally covers MMA podcasts. Uh, essentially, we try and tell you every week a podcast or the MMA podcast you should catch, a couple MMA podcasts you should skip, uh, the MMA podcast you can't miss. And we try and check out a new one every week and then give you some shout-outs to some other stuff that was good. It's been uh, basically all, as I would as I expected, and I think we've been saying for weeks now, uh, it's been all Mayweather-McGregor talk all week, right? Yeah, 100%. I mean, I don't know if I, I've maybe seen one. I, I think I've seen two podcasts this week that weren't about that, and they were both about John Jones. Yeah, Which I guess we should address right at the top, right? I mean, I'll, I'll say right now, I didn't listen to as many podcasts I usually do. And I know I've said this multiple times. Don't get me wrong. I try as much as I can. Well, and you also li- don't have a job like I do where I can just listen to podcasts all Yeah, I trust you. I wish I can have headphones on while cleaning tables and asking yeah. people they want more water. Right. Because then I wouldn't have to hear their bullshit. Or bar backing, yeah. Yeah, or bar backing um, occasionally, which I want to get back into because that's yeah, actually pretty fun. Yeah, fuck yeah to bar backing. That um, shit's actually pretty cool, but, apart from all the dishwashing. <laughs> Yeah, but either way, yeah, as far as this week, I listened to a couple things. was kind of more one-on-one interviews and a couple of things. But yeah, it was mostly me with the McGregor, and I feel like, you know what? That's something I want to get into with you as in-depth as we can that we haven't already mentioned before. Sure, you everyone's heard us for the past, say, month and a half. Uh, that's really... Probably three months we've been saying it wasn't going to happen. Yes. And then, like, the last month we've been like being like, so, oh, God, let's please not try This, of course, will it. be the podcast that we do where we really actually get into the yeah, nitty-gritty we'll actually talk about it. details of, of boxing fundamentals, mixed martial... Well, I guess really just boxing fundamentals, really. Ooh, but, yeah. yeah, and, and uh, there's a lot of podcasts that I think address a lot of this that'll be fun to bring up during this uh during this podcast, but why don't we go ahead and start off at the top? Uh, I guess we'll get it. We'll start with my catch for this week, uh, which is 
the 1,800 MMA hours that have come out in the last week. Uh, Ariel did an MMA hour on Monday. He did an MMA hour on Wednesday. He did an MMA hour today. That's right. And he's doing an MMA hour tomorrow on Friday. That's right. Uh, wow. It has been fucking chaos. He has recorded with everyone. Uh, so I am combining all of those into one catch. Uh, and that actually segues into our intro for this week, Chris, which was the most upsetting <sighs> shit I've heard in a minute. Okay. Well, Skip Bayless, as you guys heard, uh, first off, claim he clearly has amnesia. He claims he has okay. uh, never hyped a fight. He claims he has never uh, uh, been wrong about I'll, anything. I'll tell you this. For, Wait, for, yeah. And lastly, let's quickly mention, uh, as you heard in the intro, he says that he... Uh, he says that Nate Diaz, he doesn't remember saying that Nate Diaz had used sumo, sumo style. Yeah. And uh, he still thought Nate Diaz weighed 40 pounds more than okay. McGregor. So now that's out of the way. Skip Bayless, as a journalist, I like him. The guy is great at uh, speaking his mind. I think he's a decent writer. He does that well. However, he's been around. You like you were I, telling me earlier, though? I, yeah, he's been I around was, for a while, right? Yeah, no, he's been around for a while. Uh, I first saw him on ESPN when I was like 13, 14, back in like 2004, 2005. Right. On first take with Stephen A. Smith. Then he was talking most about college football, whoever the best quarterback in the NFL was. He, he's a decent mind. It wasn't until he started hyping up Tim Tebow. Yes, Tim Tebow was fantastic with the Florida Gators, Juan Heisman, blah, 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 who's the Denver Broncos. He was a system quarterback. His system only worked with Mike McCoy and all this coach ball. I won't get into the details of that. However, Chris is a giant football nerd, if yeah, you guys can't tell. American it, it, football, I should say. Fucking Skip Bayless has always been a hype man. He said in our intro, he's not a hype man. No. He hyped up Tim Tebow. He's always hyped he everything. He admitted Tim Tebow in the thing. And then uh, the thing before that, though, is his origin. The reason why he got famous and went to ESPN, he was a, a young, I wouldn't say little-known journalist, but out of college, he worked in Chicago and his big claim to fame was hyping up Michael Jordan, the greatest basketball player of That's all hilarious. fucking time. Yeah, yes. but I didn't know Skip that. Skip Bayless's biggest claim to fame is was writing that, for the Chicago I, Tribune. After he came time. out of UNC or whatever? Yeah, I think it was kind of like in the early 90s when they started right, winning right after like you, that trilogy, that three-peat. Right, right like after he so left Detroit, UN. Yeah, and, uh, those, I, I'm not a huge basketball guy, so bear with me. Well, but, it was right uh, after he uh, left University of North Carolina. Yeah, because he graduated UNC, I think, in 84, 85. Something like that. He was like a rookie in, eight, I think, spring of 85. But Skip Bayless got his claim to fame with Chicago Tribune. Great writer. Hyped up Michael Jordan. Got City Chicago behind him. Did that. And eventually, I think he was at ESPN probably in the mid to late 90s. I don't know when he's with ESPN. Now he's the Fox. Well, usually that's where all the good journalists go to die. Oh, uh, yeah. Fox. Everyone laughs at Fox. Shout to out be out. fair, there are some good journalists on Fox, especially at MMA, like Dominic Cruz, Daniel Cormier, yeah. you know, like... They just get rid of most of them. Shouts out to Damon Martin and Brian Stan. <laughs> yeah, Brian Stan, you know. Um, but either way, Skate Bayless... And Ariel. <laughs> I'd say in the past 10 years, all he's been is a hype man. Do I think he's still good as a journalist? Yeah, I'm biased. I'm a journalist too. But Skip Bayless does say some outrageous things, and God damn it, this was pretty hard to listen to, especially when he's like, well, Ariel, you know, I didn't really watch the fight before the second Diaz McGregor yeah. fight. No, the first fight I saw uh, live was McGregor like Diaz said, too. And like we said before, I think I brought it up about three or four weeks ago. I remember a little bit, hey, Chris, what's the dumbest thing I heard this week? Oh, sumo style. Yeah. Up. Yeah, and thank you, Ariel, for bringing that up. Oh, it's because the chat was blowing up with it, and Ariel was on one hour of sleep. Shouts out to the uh, uh, interview we saw him do with uh, Mayweather at four in the morning at his strip club. <laughs> yep. Girls collection. Girl collection. Girl collection, yeah. <laughs> Fucking terrible. Uh, and so Ariel was literally on one hour of sleep for that entire day, or that entire uh, MMA hour that was recorded on Thursday. And it made for, yeah, that Skip Bayless interview. At a certain point, Ariel was just, like, fucking tapping out. He's just like, uh, so uh, it was right after Skip was like, uh, when have I ever, or no, what was, oh, I don't regret anything I've ever said in my career. And yeah. I was like, oh, well, uh, so about, about MMA fans have been stuff. giving you tr uh, a bunch of, uh, a bunch of heat about over the, uh, sumo, sumo style, style thing. Yeah. And Skip Bayless goes, I don't remember what I don't remember that specifically. <laughs> and you're like, well, you don't remember it? Like, how I'm do. drunk during most of the episodes of this show, and I remember everything I say. So, good googly moogly, Skip Bayless. It was upsetting. Uh, I guess I should actually pull up my notes since there were other guests. Um, did you listen to any of the MMA hours this week? Excuse me. Um, I listened to only Cody Garbrandt. 
I kind of wanted to hear. Oh, uh, sure. Why don't we jump into that since I have notes on that somewhere? Yeah, I actually didn't write notes down of <laughs> uh, mental notes. Do you remember any of it? Uh, yeah. I remember him talking about his, like, uh, after he didn't really have surgery. It was kind of more stem cell treatment, like yep. stuff in his back. Right. But he, he was, I think it was mainly disgusting. He was very grateful that Dillashaw didn't try to decide to cut weight to 125. And, yeah, I see his reasoning. Um He's looking forward to fight TJ, which is what confirmed November 4th. Yeah, talking about recovering, like the, his whole recovery Yeah, he was all lot. saying the whole thing. Oh, I don't want to have to beat up TJ at 50 to 60%. I'm going to be 100%. I get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he said he was injured going into a lot of the fights, like the yeah, and I don't uh, know Kyoji Horiguchi yeah. fight. I so. feel like most people are injured going into the most Not Kyoji Horiguchi. Yeah. Uh, the other dude, uh, TKZ. Right? Green Zombie. That's Wasn't a featherweight it? fight. Who the fuck is the 35 or Asian? That he fought. He didn't fight Mizugaki. Yeah, he did, didn't he? No, he didn't. No, the Who last couple fight? fights he fought were Thomas Almeida, Augusto Mendes. Were the last and then what fights. was the one before that? You sure it wasn't Mizugaki? It might have been fucking Marcus Brimage. Like years no, ago. it was an Asian dude. I'll look it up. I don't know. Anyway, keep going. Uh, but yeah, I heard that. He mainly... Oh, Ariel asked a weird question about his beard going back. Oh, that's he right. Said because the barber of the fucked it up. To yeah. be fair, I've been there. I will be real. I've been to the barber, fucked my shit up, but then I still couldn't go clean shaven because I look 18. That's why I buzz my own shit and look like a Momo f- <laughs> one out of every four weeks. Which reminds me, tomorrow I'm getting my hair cut yeah. and beard cut before school starts. There you go. <laughs> so. Doing that, um, but yeah, I kind of, I, I kind of fast forward to a lot of it. It's kind of things I already heard before from about a couple weeks ago. Yeah, there's a couple good people uh, on that episode. I know Derek Lewis was on there uh, talking about how he's interested in coming back. Um, he's and, got that confirmed fight, right? With yeah, the, he's got, and that's what he said. He's goddamn like, Fabrizio Verdun. Yeah, he just said he needed some time off, and he he hasn't really been hyped for a fight since the Roy Nelson fight. Uh, he also says that everyone is racist uh, because cool. he really likes the game FIFA uh, 27, 2K17 or 2017 or, 2017, yeah. or whatever it's called. And he every, yeah. every time he's playing a video game, everyone asks him if he's playing 2K. He's like, but everyone expects him to be playing 2K, but he, he doesn't play 2K. He just plays fucking FIFA, uh, which was a fucking weird but hilarious way to put that. And he was just, like, weirdly, he's like, everybody always asks me that. Like, yo, oh, no, playing I get 2K, it. right? Oh, no, I get it. You know what's sad, too? Like, I don't play the basketball games from 2K because that's, like, the only good game 2K. 2K Mizugaki. That's who Cody Garbrandt. Oh, he did fight him. Yeah. Oh, wait, yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah he knocked him the fuck out. Yeah, at two, first round, at 40 seconds. At 202. That was his last fight for a yeah. coach. Fuck, I Yeah, I about told that. you. Yeah, it was you're before right. Almeida, yeah. You're right. Yeah, he not- No, it's after Almeida. No, right before. Or, I mean, right after. You're right. You're right, right after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Knocked the fuck out. My bad. Yeah, you're completely right. He knocked him the fuck out. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, um, yeah, if he's not playing 2K basketball, EA Sports mistakenly still has our NBA Live coming out. So good for them. True. Oh, yeah. that, that, that. NBA Live 18, good luck. Yeah. I don't play, but the only right. sports game I'll, I'll fuck with is either NHL, which is my jam, or uh, Madden. But I haven't bought. I, I, haven't, I fuck with 2K thing, a little bit. Thing. I haven't bought a Madden game since they had team play, dude. Where yeah. you could fucking do running back, yeah. wide receiver. Like, we'll until see. they bring that back, I ain't fucking with that. <laughs> yeah, that's the shit right there. I'm, the, I'm good at running back. So, like, you get my friend to play quarterback. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's it. The only thing you I play do a bunch is... against a bunch of 12-year-olds. <laughs> yeah. Know, cuss at you in the mic. Right. The only thing yeah. I do is I play 2K as Action Bronson. And uh, <laughs> I just create Action Bronson that's in amazing. game and play as him. That's uh, amazing. But also, I always make him a point guard. So, he's just, like, the fattest dude ever running around as point guard. It's the best. You can't get around uh, No, you can... T- it's the best. Oh, man. It's like it's like watching Butterbean in, uh, a sh- in a... I know in a he's from Queens, but would you have them play for the Brooklyn Nets or the New York Knicks? Uh, I always go Nets. Nets, yeah. Uh, because Jay-Z. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, yeah. Bronson would go with Jay-Z, I would assume. Um, let's see. We're way off topic. Oh, yeah, but I play a shitload of uh, EA MMA too. Or, no, not MMA. EA UFC too still. Uh, I still do all their terrible events because even though they're garbage and they just want money, they haven't updated the game in like since October. Yeah, it's oh well, they fit, they did one bug oh. bug fix, but that's it. It oh, didn't great. add anything. Uh, but let's see. Also on that ep- same episode, uh, MMA Fortnite three ninety six. Uh, Kevin Lee called in to talk about Khabib. Um, let's see. He talks about oh Ariel's real pissed that the Kevin Lee Tony fight isn't in Michigan since they're both from there. 
Yeah. Uh, Kevin Lee one point says, I listen to Joe Rogan's podcast too. I know what them weird dudes are into. They into some weirdo shit. There's a reason why he wears sunglasses everywhere. <laughs> That's a direct quote. Uh, real good. Um, Bob Bennett. He, he probably was in episode 1000. Oh, yeah. I'm, 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 no, it was the one with, uh, it was the one with Tony on it. Like, uh, no, just the one with Eddie, I mean. Because he knows, it, oh, Tony Eddie. Eddie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 That's yeah, why yeah, he, yeah. he's, Kevin shitting on Eddie being like, oh, yeah, or I me mean, on Tony being like, yeah, he's friends with Eddie Bravo. Awesome. Joe Rogan's podcast. I know the weird shit they're into. <laughs> Uh, and then Bob Bennett calls in from the NSAC to explain to everyone that uh, that his their decisions to approve glove sizes and everything had 0% to do with dollars and 100% to do with mm-hmm. facts. They just kept saying mm-hmm. that in a real weird way. Also, he mentioned that the reason why Connor got approved for the Floyd fight is because of how good Nate Diaz's boxing oh. is and how the second fight went, which is amazing because <laughs> Connor won the second fight by leg kicks. So it yeah. really oh. shows the knowledge and, of Bob And Bennett. knockdowns. But yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, but I mean, the the reason why he didn't die in the fourth round or th- third round, whichever it was, is because he started throwing light kicks. Oh, of course. Yeah. Because uh, he was getting chewed the fuck up until he started throwing oh, he light kicks. Oh, he did in the fucking first round, too. Like, oh, wait, he learned. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'll try and skim through some of this. Uh, there's so much fucking Fortnite this week. Uh, they did a Mayweather McGregor special the day one, uh, which was... Day Let's one. see. Uh, that was yesterday, Wednesday. They had Phil Baroni mm-hmm. stop by. Oh, the best ever. The best ever. Uh, and uh, they're actually recording these in the fucking media room. So there's a ton of background noise. Um, and it's kind of rough. Uh, Phil Baroni stopped by. Audio's real rough. Eventually they sort it out. Then Stefan Bonner also gets in the booth. That's great. Because they're a tag team in wrestling now. And they talk about the fuck um, up the Bullet Club. Oh, God. It's a whole fucking thing. At some point, Stefan Bonner, I think, takes off his shirt. That or Phil Baroni does. Uh, it's real Probably upsetting. The I think it was I think it was Stefan Bonner, actually, surprisingly. Uh, but, yeah, it was real upsetting. Oh, and then they said it's a conspiracy against John Jones uh, that, that's perpetrated by the UFC. Because, of course, they both hate the UFC. Um, let's see. Uh, Phil is single and opening a strip club with Stefan Bonner. Uh, Malky, Malky calls in. and uh, Malky, Salty? Yep, yeah, Salty Kawa get, calls in and gives his uh, classic failed test speech. And tainted how it's supplements. A tainted supplement excuse. Uh, he says they're already testing stuff and they're waiting for the B sample to come back. Um, Malky... Which uh, did today. Yeah, Malky mentions... <laughs> right? uh, did it? Yeah, no, I saw it came you, back you and it's, it. it's, it's USADA confirmed to Rubinol. Confirmed. Hilarious. Today. Today. Confirmed. Uh, which, by the way. He's toast. I've heard recently that they weren't able to test for that up until very recently. And if you guys don't know, uh, the test of the night of the fight is the most expensive test. The other fights, go ahead and sit down on that chair. Uh, but the uh, the most expensive fights, uh, like or the most expensive test they do that night, the lead up ones they only do base tests on, and then if it comes up positive, then they go back and they run all your old oh, ones shit. under the high level testing, which means like everyone saying, oh, how why would you just take it between weigh ins and that? Like, by the way, they're gonna go back and test those old samples, and they'll probably come yeah. up too. Which is fucking hilarious. Uh, yeah, but Malky uh, mentions in this interview that he's had three clients pop, and he's gotten all oh, three of them man. off with tainted supplement excuses, and this is Jones' uh, second time. Clearly, that's his you practice. Should that's not his forte. Say, yeah. yeah, you should not be saying well, Let me Let me uh, lay out my strategy for you, right? Malky, for everyone yeah. listening. Malky just goes to his book, oh, PEDs, and <laughs> with su- that he dumps in supplements in stores. Isn't this the same guy who used to represent NFL players, too? Like, oh. Oh, yeah, he's uh, yeah. Malky's the best. Uh, he's also representing DJ, unfortunately, which uh, Demetrius Johnson does. Make See, a I would about. say it'd be bad enough that the Kala brother, but the fact that Ali Abdulaziz, a man, by the way, read an article on Reddit. That guy was like with the. Okay, I'll say this first of all. If you're Muslim, you're Muslim. I'm not talking about those extremists. Extremists, are extremists. However, Ali Abdelaziz was on a fucking terrorist, terrorist watch, watch list, list yeah. and changed his identity multiple times. 
That's all I'm going to say about him. He's, he's uh, clearly Also good psychotic. friends with Ramzan Kadyrov. Yeah. So, uh, uh, Ali Abdul is clearly psychotic. I just feel bad for all two res- represented by him. Off the top of your head, real quick, who's represented by Ali Abdul Aziz from Econo? I Demetrius know. Johnson, Frank, Frank, Frank Mayer, Frank, Frank Yeager, C- Cody Garbrandt. Uh, uh, a bunch uh, of other Yoel good... Romero. Yeah, thank God. That sucks. Who was the other guy that popped? There's that a bunch of people. Uh, oh, 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 oh. <clears throat> I can't remember off the top of my head. Somebody else popped, though, that he got cleared with a chance. Yeah, a bunch of people that shouldn't be represented by Ali. Oh, it's right. a bummer. Oh, no, I'm thinking, sorry, I just combined a bunch of Malky guys. Uh, no, Ali is like everyone in WSOF, Justin Gaethje. Uh, oh, that's right. Uh, Fuck. Oh, it's all those guys. Frankie Aguilar. Marlon yeah, Marais. Yeah, Marlon oh, Marais, God. Yeah. Eddie. Uh, Sorry, I just totally mixed Eddie, Eddie Alvarez. I think Eddie Alvarez, too, is with Ali. I just mixed a bunch of uh, salty Kawa guys with... Uh, anyway, sorry, yeah. I just want to say Ali Abdul is a shithead. I, They're both terrible. Yeah. Uh, speaking of shitheads, uh, here's some quotes from Malky. I wouldn't help him if he's cheating. I put my face out front. Uh, which is basically Malky writing his own oh, fucking no, death sentence. No. Uh, and then friend of Conor McGregor, Michael Conlon, calls in to talk about Conor, and Mark Ramondi comes in at the end to talk about John Jones drama. Um, that's my catch for this week is those uh, couple MMA Fortnite episodes. Uh, we will also get around to some similarly related things in a bit. But, uh, yeah, good stuff. Uh, also, there's some super interviews you can skip on those episodes, so... That may come back around, but Chris, why don't you get us into what your yeah. uh, episode people should catch? Uh, this for catch this is the I only really have one, one really because I don't really Perfect. take notes on it. Uh, it was coming event. Um, I, I I liked how they talked about uh, USADA testing. The first thing they brought up, I know they mentioned Yuri Dos Santos mm-hmm. um, and how he's he's safe for now. He probably, because they recorded probably, the day before he John probably Jones will be safe. Uh, because I think it was for ibuprofen yeah. or something like that. No, I, I, it wasn't. I thought yeah, it was for something else. I think else. it was ibuprofen. I thought it was. I could be wrong. I I need to look into it. It was definitely painkillers, and I think this was a remainder of ibuprofen that triggered it. Oh, okay, yeah. weird. Uh, I know that they recorded that episode the day before John Jones shit got announced. No, yeah, they didn't mention shit about Jones. So. Yeah, uh, they mentioned him. They said, okay, out of all this, how come Ronda Rousey hasn't been tested this year? Hmm. She's not fighting. But this is probably because she's, like, basically retired. She did go to a Carrot Top show in the last couple months with her friends. That is sad. I found that out. That is sad. I like Carrot Top. He's probably pretty cool, but I want to get to the show. Uh, well, you good news, Chris. You can hear him on today's MMA Hour. I will... Same one Skip Bayless is on. not do that. Yeah. No, I recommend... No, this will come back around. Trust me. Uh, they talked about Wonder Boy versus Monspital. They said, wow, this could be a great fight. They said, if Stephen Thompson wins, does he get a third shot at Woodley? Or do they nope. just... Or they just... Do they wait for Woodley to lose? Uh, they, what, do they, what do you do? Does, does Thompson go to 185? Probably not. Thompson GSP would be fun. It would be dope. You know what? That's what you do. That's what I think you do. Say, say Stephen Thompson. What if... This is the thing. Watch. Say Stephen Thompson. Fuck it. Say even this won't happen because Miles has a chance. Actually, they're friends. I just remember. Fuck this. Say he knocks out Jorge Masvidal. Fuck it. He comes back with a spinning bullshit. Say he gets a finish. TKO. Because he wouldn't knock him out. No. Say he gets a TKO, right? Say they say, fuck it. Say Bisping doesn't win, right? Because he probably won't. Do they do? You gotta go Woodley. What do they do? Wonder Wonder Boy GSP, or do you oh. still have to go do Woodley? G- like, what, what if they do? fuck Woodley and they go Wonder Boy GSP? I think they will. I think they would. Dana, because Master Boy be tight. That sounds like something Dana would do, and it'll be way more entertaining. And you know fight. what? That just means yeah, Woodley would have to wait. Well, I mean, he's still a champ, so he didn't care. But. And that lines up Woodley fucking winner of that fight if they want to do a super fight. And, he, and you know what? Like, uh, would it, with betting wise, who would you say 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 Thompson beat? GSP and he'd be on fire. Clearly, he'd be on the top of the world. Who would you take? And obviously, the odds makers would take Wonder Boy again. You know, I don't blame him because he'd be on fire. Uh, but I'd still oh, take for Woodley? Woodley. Yeah. Oh, I would take Woodley. Oh, all I would day. take Woodley too. That'd yeah. be neat. I would say the odds makers would like Wonder Boy. But yeah, as far as Wonder Boy, I take Woodley but, over everybody except for like probably Nate Di- Nick or Nate Diaz, and even then. Like, Wait, you're saying Woodley over who? 
everyone except for like Nick or Nate Diaz. Well, Nate's uh, Nate, Nate, probably not. Or, well, I'd take him over tell Nate. That to, tell that to Skip Bayless. Well. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I would probably take him over Nate. I don't know about Nick. Although Nate's looked real good. Mm, I'm sorry, I it's honestly, a bad dude, style I would honestly for, probably take Woodley Lee. over everyone right now, except for like some top wrestler. If Kobe, if Colby coming to that could be a problem. Strike, Corey Masvidal could yeah. also be a problem. Yeah, I, of, honestly, right now, if you ask me who could beat Woodley, who could beat Woodley, I'd say Masvidal. Wonder Boy, if he actually let his hands fly, I'm dead serious. Like Wonder Boy could beat him, maybe. So. I, think, I think Wonder Boy gets fucked up if he lets his hands go. Yeah, maybe we'll see. But I'm saying like we did more with defensively. You know what I mean? Like kind of did more like like he did against uh, uh, McDonald. That's what I'm saying. Like if he fought like that, but but then again, Woodley's a different beast. Yeah. But realistically, I think Masvidal. Don't be I do, racist, also. Sure, right? Uh, Masvidal could win. I do think Wonder Boy could beat Woodley though. From what I saw, at least in the first fight, he probably could. Maybe. Probably. Uh, and after that, maybe Kobe Covington if he learned how to strike real good, man. I mean, body, he's working with Jorge. His wrestling is so good. He's working he with Jorge. Like... It is announced, right? Yeah. Danny and Maya versus Kobe. Co- Who do you like in that fight, early man? I mean, I gotta say Maya, I guess, but I don't know, dude. I... Covington's wrestling is so fucking well, good. So too. Maya should Damn. win that fight, but I think uh, way too much for game plan got set by. Uh, by both Masvidal fighting Damien, who's the guy who and fucking... And who literally will tell... And I think in a rematch... tell Colby everything he needs to know. I think in a rematch, Masvidal fucks Damien my up. Oh, I think so, too. Because uh, he was too. close to doing really dude, you know good what? in that I fight. Right now, I'm going to take Colby Cummington. It sounds insane, but, like, dude, I, that, that kid is... I have him in one of the Mag War dude, leagues. Like, yeah. yeah, that dude... Do you have him in Mag War? I have him in... Well, not our league, but <laughs> the other league. Yeah. yeah. In the, I, under, I don't think it's available. In the I TMMAC... Like, right <laughs> but like, I think but, he is in our uh, like, dude. That's in like, the MMA community. Oh one. man, that's like, dude, that's some good underdog shit too, though. Yeah, the main event probably too. Oh, uh, that'll be yeah. Tough. It's UFC Sao Paulo. I think that's one of. The, I think it's the man or co man, dude. Like, yeah. Holy that shit. That should be dope. But uh, anyway, we should get back to uh, yeah, yeah. What else from uh, co man did you catch? Anything? Yeah, they said that they talked about Antonio Bigfoot Silva. They said oh, risking the gory his life against pod. Rico Verhoeven. Oh, the glory fight, yeah. Yeah, and that that's was like, upsetting. Jack know, Slack had a great <sighs> couple comments on that, too. I don't have more, more else to say except for I've seen Verhoeven fight. It's goddamn beast. Bigfoot, his chin is spent. So I gotta go with Verhoeven on that. Um. Then they asked themselves, would Conor McGregor even consider defending his UFC belt regardless of Saturday's outcome? Well, we'll just have to see, right? I mean, yeah, it's a tough one to predict at a time. Like, maybe? May- maybe? If he fought Habib in Russia for like $5 million, he probably would do it. Probably. Yeah, it's still a, kind of a toss-up, though. Actually, I don't know, because that's, like, at this point, could be so far out of the fucking picture that, like, I think Connor would like the Kevin Lee fight, but I don't think he wants any part of Tony Ferguson. Oh, I, on it right now, I think Connor would beat Kevin Lee. Uh, I don't know about Tony. I don't know, though, because Kevin Lee, if Kevin Lee gets through Tony, that's a good Oh, sign. if Kevin beats Tony, then Kevin's beating Connor. If Tony beats Kevin... Uh, that's still that's not a matchup it, I think well, Connor wants yeah. I, mean, no, no. I mean no, I expect Tony to be Kevin but I'm uh, not positive man Kevin's gotten really really oh, he's good long as shit, and too. he just choked out a black belt kind of yeah kind of uh, and then there's this on their are you fucking kidding me Jake Elmer's son Threw an iPad Pro up in the air, which hit Jake, his dad, under the eye, and he That's had to go right. to the ER. I That's forgot the about line. that. Wow, I feel that with Jake Elmer. That's just bad. Luck. Yeah, luckily he's all right, but that is, uh, yeah, that's not great. Also, shouts out to this one redhead chick I follow called Something Ginger. I don't remember what it actually is. But uh, evidently her kid today both ate toothpaste and dropped a casserole dish. <laughs> She's like, hashtag terrible mom. <laughs> so I thought that was fucking great. She's uh, hilarious. I'm not going to actually shout out her name because, number one, I don't remember it. And number two, you savages. She go nowhere near that poor girl. Um, but... We will go ahead and uh, roll in. I actually had a second catch for this week because my first catch, uh, spoiler alert, is a little bit of a skip also, which we'll get into. Um, But my other catch this week was uh, Luke Thomas did a Monday morning analyst video for Mayweather McGregor preview uh, where he basically took a bunch of fan questions and had an expert panel answer them. 
Uh, so Dan Hardy opens by talking about Wild Styles and how much boxing uh, has been reduced to like basically what everyone knows works. Just in the fact that like boxing keeps getting reduced to like these fine, fine, fine definitions of what works in a fight. Whereas uh, someone like McGregor coming in is kind of a rare occurrence and kind of shakes that up. Uh, and then, yeah, like I said, Luke uses the fan questions, and he, here's the team of people he has answer it. He has Stephen Wright, who's formerly of Team Takedown, who's the striking coach for Johnny Hendricks, uh, Brandon Six Gun Gibson out of uh, out of Jackson Wink. They have Paul Felder, uh, Barry Hunter, who's the head trainer at Headbangers Gym in D.C., and Lamont Peterson, who's a welterweight WA world champ. Uh, and Luke Thomas basically just bounces a bunch of questions off him and has him answer it. Uh, some of the questions are like the difference between the 10 ounce and 8 ounce gloves, whether Connor has an advantage in the clinch, uh, how stance switching can affect the fight, difference in punching uh, angles between boxing and MMA, who has con- the conditioning edge in the f- in a boxing fight. It's really, really interesting. Yeah. And you get like very, very high level technical analysis from a wide range of very uh, well studied people. So. I thought it was just an awesome, awesome clip, and uh, it's like 45 minutes. It's on YouTube. Uh, we'll have a link in the description as well as we will have a link on the uh, on our we, every week. If you guys don't know, every week on YouTube we put up a uh, playlist of all the podcasts we recommend that put it out on YouTube. So like Jack Slack and everybody will be on there. Uh, Luke Thomas, MMA, Vivisection, or anyone else we mentioned. So uh, check that out for sure. Cause uh, those are, uh, I actually recommend watching most of these on YouTube if you can, because a lot of them have either uh, visual examples or it's just, it kind of, I, I find podcasts a lot more times if I have them on a, like, just even a side screen in the background, I end up paying attention a little bit more, so. I'll just tell you, right now. You just got Colby Covington? Let's fucking go. Look at this, dude. Oh, I'm fucking stacked. Yeah. Ready to go. So, Colby, I dropped Cowboy. You dropped that, yeah, yeah, you can get Cowboy if you want, but. Uh, Cowboy, oh, I bet it'll come back up. But so, right it. now, at, real quick, Here, everyone. Why don't we break down I, your Mag War League? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my Mag War League. And, and officially, this is the TMMAC Alpha League, I believe. Yeah, so my nearest fight, my flex play, Brian Barberina. Can't remember who the fuck he's fighting, but he's fighting the second. I'll say who. Who's pointing at fighting? I got Rafael dos Anjos or dos Anjos. I'm talking like fucking Artem Lobov. <laughs> Rafael dos Anjos fighting on September 9th. I also have Jeremy Stevens fighting on September 9th against. Oh, he's fighting Gilbert Melendez. That should be interesting. Uh, on the 16th, I have Luke Rockhold versus David Branch. I have Kamara Usman on September Man, that's 16th. A strong list. On another September 16th, I have fucking Mike Platinum Perry. Here we fucking go. Uh, then after that, on October 28th, to round it off, I now have Colby fucking Covington versus Sweet. Demi and Maya. I love those odds. And then on my bench, Rosna Muniz, who may, may not fight Joanna, which would be fucking sick. Yeah, hey, I got Joanna. Holly so. Holm, who's going to fight yeah, probably Cyborg on UFC 219. Probably. I got Alexander Gustin, who is now probably going to fight Daniel Cormier for the probably. championship. We'll see. And I got Volkan Uzdemir. Holy shit, let's go. Yeah. So I am goddamn stoked right now for my quarter fucking potential, man. Like, this is fucking tight. For sure. And you guys all, I'm sure, hear a lot more of us talking about the uh, fantasy league we're doing. And if you haven't listened to previous episodes, magwar.com is an MMA fantasy league site. Uh, the guy Lawfitz, who uh, has been posting on a bunch of stuff. I saw he posted on Reddit. He posted on, on uh, the UG, MMA community right? and on the UG. Uh, he And on the OG, technically. Uh, he posted uh, trying to get people to join. So I'm in the UG league and in the uh, MMA community league. And you're in the MMA community league. Yep. So been a lot of fun and uh it's cool basically you just like you have a flex fighter that you can add for each card and then you can pick a lineup it's done like kind of as a quarterly matchup and then it all comes together at, like playoffs in the end of the season it's pretty fucking dope you get points for like finishes and uh main event spots and it's a it's, it's a cool system and I, i've been talking to the guy he's working on a lot of stuff they're actually going to work in overturns of decisions i'm soon. sure because I asked him about it sarcastically with the fucking uh, Daniel Cormier not happy face uh, gif. And uh, he uh, he was like, actually, we have that upcoming where if shit gets changed, we are going to uh, actually, as long as the season is still active, we're going to honor it. Which is cool as fuck. Uh, 
So I, I it'll be it'll be real interesting to see uh, how that progresses. I'm pretty hyped on it. Um, let's see. Did you ever skip this week? I probably would say unfiltered because he I didn't catch to this it. guy named Charles Bird. I think the, that's was. the ref for this weekend's fight. Was it ref? Yeah. Charles Bird is the ref for the Connor. Um, Was it Charles? Mayweather. Let me see his name. It, I'm almost positive. Unless I'm totally fucking that up, but the, I'm. Almost, I know the last name of the ref who's refing that fight is Bird. It is. Yeah, Charles Bird. They're talking about how he's making his UFC debut. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it's a Larry Bird. Nope, that's the wrong one. There's that's some the other. Player. There's some other Bird that's actually referencing the Connor fight. I'm pretty anyway, sure. there's Charles Bird guys in middleweight in the UFC. Now he is. He's gonna make his debut soon. Uh, I just said skip it because they were doing their Mayweather McGregor preview and they didn't really do a preview at all. They just talked about Matt was talking about how someone served him warm Dr Pepper and that pissed him off. Checks out. Weird shit like that. And they, yeah, they actually never talked about fight. Think, Robert Bird is think, the name of the referee. I think all they said, dude, was, who do I want to win the fight? I want Connor to win. Well, no shit, because you're MMA, so. Every MMA fighter just keeps picking Connor in a real upsetting kind of and way. people who care about the safety of women not getting in the face, I think, would want Connor to win. Well, yeah. Well, unless you don't have a dog in the fight. I get it. But... Either way, didn't give a fuck about that episode, unfortunately. It didn't do anything for me. I could see that as a skip, for sure. Uh, I actually didn't listen to it this week, so hey, I, I, I used the skip effectively. Uh, my skip for this week is also the MMA Fortnite. Uh, or MMA which, Hour. Which day? Uh, no, I'm saying interviews in every one of those episodes you should skip. Um, Especially Skip, Bayless, Ariel. Uh, and have my friend Shannon Peanut Butter Sharp. Even more so than Skip Bayless, a hundred percent you should skip. Um, you should definitely skip the Carrot Top segment where he knows nothing about the fight. Wait, wait, wait! wait. He had Carrot Top. Carrot Top was the first guest on today. The fucking show. Yeah, because he lives in Vegas and needs attention. It's real bad, Chris. <laughs> he knows nothing about MMA. Ariel even says after the interview, "Well, he knows. He clearly knows nothing about this fight." <laughs> wait, wait! He said that. that uh, was something great. along those lines. Thank it was you. Pretty upsetting. Uh, yeah, it, it was ridiculous. Also, uh, you can go ahead and oh, no. uh, skip. Sorry, I'm trying to pull up uh, all the guests that were on these fucking episodes because there was a ton of them. Um, here we go. Uh, let's see. You can skip Lou DiBella, the uh, boxing guy who has been around forever. You sort for Showtime. You can skip the Yogurty Dave Fogarty uh, segment, even though I do like Yogurty. Uh, not. A, not a segment worth listening to. John Cavanaugh says everything you would expect him to say on uh, episode 396. Uh, Mike Constantine, or Mick Constantine, same thing, says everything you would expect him to say. Uh, let's see, on the Mayweather McGregor one, uh, you can mostly skip Malky Kawa. You can uh, skip Michael Conlon, who Michael Conlon is a boxing training partner of Conor McGregor. You can skip Al Bernstein, who uh, Al Bernstein is an old person who is uh, not worth listening to the segment on. Oh, dude, he was the motherfucker that I listened to last week in Anakin Floor and I didn't give a shit about. Yeah, so those are all ones you can absolutely skip, uh, and you are missing out on almost nothing. Uh, actually, I have more of them. Hold on, give me a second. Uh, you can skip out on the Valentina Shevchenko interview where Ariel basically just asked her to dance and, and shoot guns. Ask her like two questions about the fight she has lined up. Because is she fighting isn't somebody? She clearly fighting Amanda Nunes at two fucking fifteen. Yeah, she has. He has like two fights. So why the fuck about. would he ask her that? Uh, Gavin and Joe Maloof, who are the. Uh, the Maloof brothers are the guys who own the Texas, uh, or the Houston Rockets, and the wait, Never did, Never they, Hungover guys. How do they spell their name? M A L O O F. Wait, wait, M A. Maloof. Wait, where? I'm fucking blind. Maloof, right there. Right there. 
Oh, never mind. Okay, because I went to a friend, a friend of mine whose name is what it is spelled way different. Yeah. Ones. Anyway. Curious, yeah, curious. they're like uh, they're super rich. Evidently, they bet like a stupid. They they evidently have the biggest bet in on Mayweather McGregor for Mayweather win, and they're gonna donate a big chunk of charity. Well, that's it was nice. Basically, just a giant plug for their uh, no hangover but, cure. And uh, Arrow kept making fun of how I they think, should buy. I think this is the stuff, dude, that you take after you're hungover. I think I'm so. Almost positive. I think so. Because clearly, it's it wouldn't, the logi- it wouldn't bottles, logically yeah. make sense to for your drunk ass or my drunk ass to be like, oh, I need to drink this now. You know what I mean? So I, no, no, I think it's think it's that. either before you start drinking or after you start drinking, but I think it's after because it yeah. does have caffeine, so that makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, Amanda Nunes and Nina Ansaroff had a pre-recorded interview. You can skip. Isn't Nina Ansaroff fighting too soon? Yep. Is uh, she fighting Angie Hill? Yep. That oh, was shit. literally all that was said during that interview. Cool. Hey, Nina Ansaroff, you're fighting Angie Hill, right? That'll be fun. All right, we need next guest. Uh, Freddie Roach called in. You can skip that part. It's Ooh, exactly what you expect. I know expect. he will be in the corner of GSP, even though please don't get in the way for us, a hubby. Yeah. Uh, Bruce Buffer uh, called in and did Bruce Buffer things like he always does. And Chris Eubank called in sounding like a uh, less punch drunk Gary Goodrich. Um, the only part that I would recommend actually catching on that episode, I guess, it, well, actually, you heard all the good Skip Bayless parts at the beginning of this segment. Um, and Jim Tebow, Chris. Yeah, you heard all the good parts. And then, uh, Demetrius so Johnson, long. Demetrius Johnson and Kevin Lee do sit down and, uh, have some hilarious, uh, comments about just, like, where they're both at and, uh, being real oh, salty. Christ, I need to clean you're all good. Up. I am a fucking spaz. Uh, you're all good. Uh, but yeah, Demetrius Johnson and Kevin Lee both sit down with Ariel and start talking to him just about, uh, like, their positions in their divisions and DJ's upcoming fight. They also talk about the John Jones stuff a little bit, which is hilarious. Because DJ uh, says the quote that you guys will hear in our next break, which is, uh, it's hard to fail a drug test. <laughs> and he explains how it's hard to fail a drug test, and you basically have to be ignorant to fail a drug test. DJ uh, said that, right? Yeah, which I oh, completely agree with, and that's why DJ is one of the best of all time. So uh, he's like, I don't, I call Jeff Nowitzki before I take anything. That's just what I do. One time I called them asking him if I can take a Tylenol because I have a headache right before a fight, and they're like, fuck no, don't take nope. Tylenol, I'll take aspirin because otherwise you'll pop. <laughs> so, uh, it's just a it's a fucking it's a great segment and I do recommend checking that out but pretty much every other part you can skip because uh, it's upsetting and not worth your time so my uh, my catch is also my skip this week but why don't we get into Chris do you have a can't miss this week ah uh, not really <laughs> I guess it was coming and it already fucking went over him. perfect well that works uh, so my can't miss this week let me pull back over to my notes. Uh, my can't miss is uh, actually leads us imperfectly, Chris, to your uh, new podcast recommendation for this week. I'm going right so now. the new podcast you listen to, uh, actually right before we recorded this, was the MMA Viva Depresta special yeah, boxing right. and MMA episode. That was right. Because uh, MMA Viva section and MMA Depressed Us kind of combined forces, uh, which if you guys don't know. MMA Viva section is normally, or at least for UFC cards, is normally Conor Rebush of Heavy Hands and Zane Simon of Bloody Elbow. Uh, and then they also have the show that we've covered before called MMA Depressed Us that they do on shows without MMA cards, which is Zane Simon, uh, Conor Rebush, and Evil Greg Jackson from Twitter. His name's Phil something, I think. McKenzie, Phil McKenzie. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, it's a, it's one of my favorite shows of all time. And uh, this was your first time watching it, right? Yeah. Uh, I've listened to the movie section. I've never listened to or seen, I should say, Depressed Us. Yeah, and if you guys um, haven't seen Depressed Us before, the way it works is they go back and they watch a bunch of old uh, MMA fights that were bad or at least considered bad. I think it's they watch a good bad fight, a bad bad fight, and a fight that was expected to be better. I think is the qualifications for those. Um, and they just sync you up on Fight Pass. Like, they count you down like we do for commentaries. Three, two, one, go. And then you watch the fight along with them while they uh, make fun of how Ryan Couture looks like he thought he was walking into a bed, bath, and beyond. Not a fight. Um, and it's it's real goofy. Like, out the gate in this episode, Connor starts smart smoking hookah right at, like, and blowing it right at the camera while he's wearing a shirt with the hookah smoking what did caterpillar you, what did from you Alice make in it? Wonderland. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. Oh, fucking Jesus hilarious. Christ. 
Uh, also, they talk about the uh, they briefly at the beginning talk about the Connor Floyd fight uh, hesitancy that they have towards it and just how weird it is overall. Uh, they did mention that Floyd keeps playing up uh, how out of shape he is, and Zayn uh, said that he expected him at some point put out a video of Floyd just smashing his own ankle with a hammer, trying to get people to <laughs> believe that he wasn't going to be 100% in the fight. Yeah. Um, they talk about the insane density of uh, layers and branches that Floyd has to every reaction in a fight, um, which is really cool, and they're, they're known for giving like our very articulate and dense breakdowns of style matchups and... Uh, and just kind of how how they view certain uh, styles matching up and fighters I'll, matching I'll up just, against I'll each just other. Say, I'll just say this. I know I was going to mention there an actual, like, me and yours actual, like, prediction and all that bullshit breakdown. I'll just do a little teaser. Just at work today, I work at George at the Cove in La Jolla. It's a nice, fine dining restaurant. Yeah, shouts out. If you guys, yeah. guys want to go get some fucking... Some good for lunch, real good. Uh, try the Samita chicken yeah. sandwich. It's a Mexican style, Mexican style chicken sandwich. Real fucking good. Right on the fucking, it's a gorgeous uh, view. Right on the goddamn coke in La Jolla. There's a really yeah. cool cafe right next door that I used to get trashed at with yes, my girlfriend do. that worked there. Because she would just pour pints of fucking, uh, she would pour pints of wine into a coffee cup for me. And I would just eat fucking bagels with uh, cream cheese all day. And then I'd go to work at haagen trash with a giant pint of uh, Pinot Grigio. Like a professional. Either way, for the casual fan who doesn't know shit about the fight on Saturday, I fucking went by a table. There's a bunch of paralegal-looking motherfuckers. I was like, all right, well, first of all, after like two tequila shots in, he was like, Floyd Mayweather is a pussyfoot fighter. He's like... Bounces around and like doesn't get hit, and who like counterattack when it's like near the end of the round. And I was like, God fucking damn it, man! Like, listen to this fucking bullshit. I kind of wanted to intervene and just tell them what's up, but I just couldn't do it because I had to stay at my job, man. But- yeah, it's one of those. Uh, it's definitely one of those situations where every time I hear anyone talk about this fight, I get upset on any side, really. Like I yeah, bro, because Mayweather's clearly a pussyfoot fighter. Well, that's the thing. is like No one watches Mayweather fights that talks about Mayweather fights. Or if they do talk the about Mayweather sh- fights, yeah. they haven't seen any McGregor they go, fights. Bro, Mayweather runs. He's a pussy. That he that- doesn't try and he runs. Just like in MMA, Dominic Cruz is a pussy and he runs. <laughs> that or they're like, oh, well, McGregor, if this was an MMA fight, would take him down and ch- and choke him out. But since it's, it's like, a boxing, you're like, you have not watched any... Fuck. Well, no, but they're saying, like, you, anyone that says that clearly hasn't watched... like night, Or I should say most people who say that haven't watched any of McGregor's fights. Like, all the boxing guys are like... There's like three boxing guys who've watched McGregor's fights that have commented on this. I feel like, Cause, and they're the ones who are like, "Hey, he's got a good straight left. Uh, he doesn't do much with his right hand. He uh, is southpaw most of the time, but he'll switch up stance a little bit, which could be weird. Like that's the shit you tend to hear uh, from people who've actually watched his fights who box. But everyone else is like, he all he does is he's never he he doesn't know anything about boxing." All he knows is his judo and his, his sumo techniques. <laughs> it's all upsetting. So, oh boy. And we'll, uh, yeah, we'll get more into specifics of what like we actually think. So. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's see. What was the? Uh, oh God, phone. Why are you making that noise? Um, you covered everything you had on that. Yeah, right? I have like nothing. Oh else. no, wait. We have a. Uh, oh right. Uh, I forgot. We. I have a couple more things on the. Yeah, uh, right on. Since this is my can't miss this week. Uh, so the three fights that they showed on that show were KJ Nunes versus Ryan Couture, Mark Hunt versus Nisha Jima. Oh, I remember that. That was pretty bad. Yeah, you got here during that one. Uh, Rob Broughton versus Butterbean. and uh, That was real bad, too. And Randy Couture versus James Tony. And I remember that from watching it like a year or two ago. Yeah, I mentioned the uh, Bed Bath & Beyond comment about how Ryan Couture walks to the ring. They also said he walks to the ring like uh, someone transported into his body, and they're like real upset said about what's happening and then someone tells them hey no it's cool you're ready yeah. to your son oh yeah and, remember, and then they I look like real confident for like remember, five minutes I'm glad until you knew starts. that reference that I mentioned to you for all the listeners uh, you know I am I'm, I was born in 91 I'm 26 blah 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 you watch TV shows in the late 90s or 2000s do you remember the show The Jersey oh, yeah, on yeah. Disney 
I never watched Disney. However, whenever Disney would have those dope shows, they'd be great. And the jersey was tight because about this kid who finds some... I think it was like... It was the kid from dude, Brink. I think it was Jim Brown's jersey. Some like legendary Somebody running like right? that, yeah, yeah, Jim Brown, right? Fuck it, because Jim Brown's a maze athlete. He's like a fucking athlete in basketball, Laird in fucking lacrosse and goddamn football. Yeah, the rest is history. But, Chris, you remember the jersey too, Right? Isn't that what that kind of reminded you of? Like, yeah. It's it like, real ridiculous, yeah, for sure. Like, oh my God. <laughs> it's super funny. Um, let's see. So, yeah, they talked about that KJ Noon Dragon Guitar Fight and how crazy it is. Like, re watching it, it's insane how little punches Ryan Couture lands or throws versus how many kicks he throws. Like they keep joking that you like the the low kick is the jab of MMA because the entire time he's just throwing weird low kicks and like just confusing and upsetting KJ Noons. Uh, they also make some great jokes about how KJ Noons every time he comes out of the corner looks like he just got out of timeout. And how they wish uh, every time uh, there was a corner period for KJ Noons, they just made him face the post <laughs> like he was in trouble. It's real good. Oh, uh, let's see. They had the um, Rob Broughton Butterbean. Oh, no. Uh, Mark Hunt. Ash. First, it was Mark Hunt versus Nishijima. That's right. Uh, Mark Hunt fucking destroyed Nishijima, who was a boxer was, in 533. It was real bad. It, it was just a bunch of punting the dude to the face and destroying him on the feet. Uh, and Mark Hunt gassed, like, ha- most of the way through the f- first round and then just, like, tightened up his technique and kept destroying him. Yeah. He tried a double jumping knee on a grounded fighter at some point in that fight. Uh, a lot of just punting and kneeing dudes to the face were on the ground. It's it's rough to watch. Uh, and finally, Nishijima taps out, I believe, in the third round or the ref jumps in. I think the ref jumps in. Uh, Rob Broughton and Butterbean. Oh, boy. The jokes in this one are real good. Uh, there's a whole bunch of jokes about how Butterbean is too round to mount or actually contain it in any kind of position. I believe he's described as Did a weeble wobble at one I point. I saw that and they called him like a natural roller. <laughs> Or something yep. ridiculous. And it's like, you know, yeah, he just what? naturally that makes a rolls. Lot of sense. He's just a naturally rolly person. And like, yeah. his arm is two feet long and like fucking a foot wide. He's just, I remember yep. he was just like this. Like, yep. He's just a fuck? weeble wobble the entire time. Like, and what then, the uh, fuck? Yeah, real fucking funny. Um, I mean, it's just classic Butterbean not knowing any kind of ground game. The takedowns are defense is non existent the entire fight. It's just real fun to watch. It's real, it's real upsetting in a funny kind of way. Uh, and eventually he taps out to strikes, but oh man, it was, uh, it was a thing. And then, of course, Randy Couture versus James Tony, the low ankle pick to mount to domination through punches and then head and arm was th- that entire fight it was like I don't know what it is two minutes three minutes yeah and surprisingly dude that was August of 2010 yeah it's crazy that it was only 2010 I thought it was yeah. way longer wow, ago that's crazy it, fe- it feels like James Tony fought in the UFC like, like wow. fucking I thought it was like 08 or I was like yeah like 08 ish it's pretty crazy uh, and then uh, of course it has to remind you of the Ryan Bader, uh, Anthony Rumble Johnson, <laughs> yeah, fight, that was which is the, the other version of wow. how that goes. Yeah. Uh, but just funny overall, and uh, I thought it was a lot of fun. Uh, great episode. Uh, so for my new episode this week, I listened to Karsten's Corner, uh, 820 and 821, I believe are the dates. Uh, so August 20th and August 21st. Uh, it would have the okay, you guys. I've talked about this fucking ninja feud on the OG That's for right. a while. That's uh, right. So Carson, like an irresponsible fuck that he is, uh, had Ninja Ron Collins on on the twentieth. Uh, this motherfucker again? Yeah, he's the ninja who was going to fight Icy Mike. Who Icy Mike came on on the twenty first, and they both gave their takes. It's real. Do upsetting. they have video? Oh yeah, there's videos. Please I've, show me this when they actually fight. Oh, yeah. No, they're doing it on Street Beef. So Street Beef Thank posts you. the YouTube no, no, no. video. Like, is this like the white world star? Oh, uh, yes. Thank 100%. you. That's like the Street Beef. Yeah. Sounds super white world star. Basically. It's, what, it's, it's West Virginia world star. Okay, yeah. Please or show Virginia me this. World if star. you have like footage, we need to see. I need to see. This is no, yeah. amazing. Uh, also, this sounds amazingly bad. Also, they're fighting uh, in two days. on the May, uh, They're fighting on the 26th. Oh, on my. the same day as Mayweather McGregor. Good for them. <laughs> yeah. Have fun not anyone watching Equally, that. No, it's... I'm 
Unless they have it on like at twelve noon. Li- it's not live streamed. Okay. Uh, but it 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 is fitting to be on the same day as Mayweather McGregor. Mm-hmm. Might as well. It's, freak show, circus show. Yes. Yeah, it's freak the, show fight. It's the day of freak show fights. Where yeah, a freak ni- show fight yeah. phenomenon. Where yeah. a ninja is going to fight a point karate guy who has a, a, a two stripe white belt. See, that's what's jiu-jitsu. funny. When I hear ninja. I think, do they know ninjutsu, like, their own stuff? Yeah. Or do they know kung fu? No, he or says... Know, like, what the fuck are they, like, so practicing? Like, you know he what I mean? Doesn't like, describe what the fuck himself, is this shit? He doesn't describe himself as a ninjutsu practitioner who's fighting. He's he's describing himself as someone who's street fighting using who knows ninjutsu. <sighs> yep, this is what everyone's been doing on the forum. This is really struggling. Yep. Yeah. Like, oh, really I've showed you the gifs, right? Of, I think you have. Of, like, Ron Collins just fucking... It's his ninja. He has videos of how to be a ninja, and it's just him walking down a street, and he's wearing a green shirt, and then he just lies down. <laughs> or, like, See, he's pretending to be a rock. if I wanted to be rock. a ninja, dude, I would do ninjutsu, I do kung fu, I do tai chi, I do muay thai. You do everything. You do fucking everything, right? Well, no. So at least you know how to fucking See, defend yourself. Chris, like, god damn it. This I is mean, the classic, I know it's better send it down unless you actually fight fucking people, This is right? the classic mistake white people make, Chris. Ninjutsu right? is actually about technical espionage. Oh, shit. It's spying. It's all about the art of not being seen and gathering yeah, information. But I think that's why I guess I combined, you know, like Tai Chi, Kung Fu, like all Oh, well, Muay don't, thai. don't learn Tai Chi unless you hate yourself. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, isn't Tai Chi more kind of like counter Tai Chi, no. Tai Chi is the shit old dudes do in the park at trees. No. Okay, well, excuse me. Kung Fu, right? Is, no. Is your Wing Chun? What's the one None that's of them are effective. Like, None? Do, fucking okay, so just Muay Thai, thai boxing, just wrestling, Muay thai. Just Muay Thai, thai, thai yeah. and boxing. Just, I have yeah. no tolerance for... I yeah. mean, <laughs> just Muay Thai and boxing. How did, mu- how did fucking Wing Chun work out for Anderson later on in his career? When he started getting... It's up for like it. two parries. But yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, no, that's <laughs> to be fair, he it. did have like one legit Wing Chun parry when he was like this. I think it was against like Rich Fine. <laughs> a lot of it was against Michael Bisping, which none of that helped him. He just hit a fly knee. <laughs> that was the only thing that helped him in that entire fight. He still lost. Um, he actually did lose that fight. Like, yeah. Like, no, I watched him fight like five, five times. Michael Bisbee won the fight that has points. Oh, Based off points. For sure. That's a fucking fact. Yeah, but uh, so I should mention briefly on the uh, Carson interview, like, Carson's audio is real rough if you haven't heard it. Also, it's only available on Blogspot Radio. Oh, great. Because you can't, because his what fucking iTunes shit? feed doesn't work correctly, even though I tried to help him multiple times. Sorry, mate. My iTunes feed, you cunt. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not my favorite. But uh, it is hilarious that he did these interviews, and it is hilarious them make fun of the fat fuck Phil Elmore, who uh, if there's some great pictures of him with his flashlight self-defense fighting book or oh, his great. sword defense fighting book. Oh, even better. Yeah, they're very, very cute. Uh, he is a, the fattest old man, uh, and he's such a cunt. Phil Elmore? Yeah, he's such a cunt. That's a cunt name. No, I've tried to fight him a bunch of times. Uh, I, I hope you fucking, do. I, no, I I would fight him except I pay to watch it. He's gonna just shoot somebody instead. I'm gonna shoot you, or no. I won't. I'm gonna pay to see well, you get shot. That's the thing. Is like he's a giant coward. He's the yeah. No, closest. see, please don't fight him because no. I don't want you to get shot. He won't even respond to me anymore because he's igno- he's set me on ignore on the floor. Where, did, where does he live? Like Portland or something? No, uh, New Jersey, New York. I posted his fucking house address at some point because the idiot had it as his business address. Oh, what, a, what a smart guy. I was guy. like, anyone want to visit Phil? And I posted his business address. He's like, not cool, bro. I was like, what? He's like, that was a house. I was like, Public he's like, luckily I don't live there yeah. anymore. But I was like, why the fuck do you post your business address as your house address? You now can't. people who actually now want to I eat look the fuck like out I'm of you will be you. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, now, what an idiot. Now what I'm accidentally dummy. doxing you because you're an idiot. Uh, what a fucking dummy. Yeah, he's a giant coward. And uh, Phil Elmore, if you ever hear this, uh, come fight me, bro. I'll meet you on the corner of Claremont, Mesa, and fucking Balboa, and I'll fight you in the fucking And street. Limerick, bro, or anywhere. Fuck yeah. you. <laughs> I, will beat, I will beat you the fuck up. Because um, you're fat and you... I, all I have to do is move you for know, 10 seconds. I will tape it. Or, you know, excuse me, tape, I will film it. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you're old. Anyway, now that I'm done uh, shitting on ninjas, uh, I guess that's about all I had to say. Oh, Carson gets real pissy about Brett Akimoto and uh, Puke Thomas. God damn it, every time you say Carson, I think Carson Daly. This TRL, bro. <laughs> Carson's brutal. Carson's also the guy who posted a, a thread on the underground being like, the UFC Performance Institute isn't uh wouldn't let me have a, a, it's a not, tour. It's not a real institute. They're like no, they was like it, they wouldn't let me have a tour. 
It's like, you... Because you're a bitch. He, no, he just showed up and was like, can I look around? I'm just like, no. Like, <laughs> yo, even journalists schedule shit, bro. That's how being a journalist works. You don't just show up on vacation and be like... Hey, uh, can I walk around where all these elite athletes are? Yeah, dude, like, when I went to Alliance, I fucking had that in advance. Yeah. That's the point. That's, like, what, I, I that's Alliance, what I said. I thought, like, fucking a month in advance, yeah. and I showed up, and I'm like, hey, yeah, uh, I'm a student from San Diego State. I'm actually here to interview a couple, uh, you know, UFC fighters. I met the agent, and her name is Leia. She was cool. So, like, oh, yeah, you know. Uh, yeah, you have to clear, uh, you have coach, to have a reference. Here's Coach Miguel everything. Reyes, who, he's a fighter. He's, of he's course, the coach yeah. of Tijuana. He's real good. Yeah, Miguel Reyes is he, dope. He's, like, one of Dom's, Dom Akuda's dragon coaches. And I, oh, by the Wait, uh, would you be down with coaching uh, or uh, interviewing Katz and Ghana? I'm like, hell yeah. <laughs> you know Speaking I mean? of which, we still need to put that out at some yeah, point. Yeah, and I interviewed Katz and Ghana. You know what I mean? So I was like, it was fucking badass. And then Chris Stanley taught me how to box again. True. Right? Speaking of <laughs> which, Chris Stanley fights, I think, maybe In this LFA, weekend. In LFA, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe so, this weekend. Yeah, always shout out to Alliance and a new facility in Barrio Logan, which I need to revisit. Yeah, actually, you know what? In this week's episode, uh, at the end of this week's episode, we are going to include the uh, Katz and Ghana interview, if you're cool with that. I still have have it. I'm pretty sure I still have it. So cool. Yeah, if you still have the audio for that, we'll uh, post that at the end of this because that'll be cool. I'm interested to hear it because I haven't oh, yeah. yet. Um, but yeah, way off topic. But uh, yeah, Carson is kind of a shit show. He's also the dude who like he's never got credentialed because he openly talks shit on Dana and everybody, uh, which is how you don't get credentialed. Which is I you, I you gotta kind of respect it. Dude's been doing a show since I think '08. Like he's one of the oh, original yeah. MMA podcast guys. Um, and yeah, like I, I like Carson, but it definitely uh, a little bit of trouble. Uh, is there anything else that you uh, listen to this week? Uh, unfortunately, I think that was about man, it. Right? I wish I did, but I'm kind of just saving everything for our own real. I'm trying to sound not trying to sound like Skip Bayless, but you know, <laughs> right. our own real authentic take right. on the fight well, we talk about how this Connor's weekend gonna use his judo. Over, you know Conor McGregor will be 190 pounds okay yeah, he was 25 wrestling. pounds heavier than Floyd the wife beater and you know what he's gonna really <laughs> use his fucking taekwondo and his tai chi <laughs> and his kung fu aesthetics and really You're just gonna Bruce Lee him? kick him in the face. Oh god. Okay. Uh, <laughs> He's gonna defy the logic of boxing. <laughs> well, we'll, get, we'll get into that How shortly. Much? Just skip it. Yeah. Say, you know. Well, we'll get into that shortly. But quickly, uh, Heavy Hands had a great Conor Floyd breakdown where they're. They're, they just try to talk about, like, what possible game plans Connor could implement that could be, po- like, successful. Uh, they did make a good point about whether or not the clinch favors Connor because of his wrestling experience or whether it favors Floyd because of his boxing experience. Um, and they had Felix Biederman on uh, from Chopo Trap, ha- Chopo Trap House, uh, which is a great political podcast. It's, like, more of a comedy podcast than a political podcast, but... Uh, pretty hilarious overall. Uh, Felix jokes about how uh, they have the most Patreon subs of anyone, which they do. And he jokes about how he's already spent all the money he made from it. Um, he's just super tongue-in-cheek and uh, just pretending to be a shithead. Uh, he also fires shots at Dana saying that uh, he's worried he he stopped following him as MMA as closely because he was worried his leftist political views would start reflecting poorly on the sport. And, and that, like maybe great. maybe outsiders would start thinking that it was run by people on steroids and who don't give a fuck about anyone involved in it. <laughs> just clearly just shots fired at Dana. <laughs> That's fucking, fucking hilarious. Great. That's fucking great. Felix is super funny. And he also talks briefly about his history training in BJJ and uh, how he cool. learned it for self defense. Uh, beat down after the bell for Tuesday Night Contender Series uh, that TJ DeSantis does on Sure Dog. Uh, actually turned into John Jones' talk because it was Tuesday night when that got announced. Coincidental. Uh, yeah, they had Andy Foster on from CSAC, which oh, was cool. Right. Uh, who's who? By the way, that fight took place in California, so uh, they actually get to make the ruling on Shit. John Jones's suspension. Uh, they talk about John popping or getting flagged for uh, a positive test, and how uh, the CSAC handles USADA results for fighters in California. Uh, since the fight happened there, uh, they actually, like I said, have the ruling over it, and the appeal will also happen in California if he decides he wants to appeal it. Um, and Andy. 
Foster, I also noted, sounds a lot like Huel Hauser. If you guys have ever seen the public access TV show in California that a guy named Huel Hauser does, where he goes to very boring places and acts fascinated, it's a lot of like, well, that's amazing. It's that fucking, sounds hilarious. No, it's the best. He's like, wait, so you're telling me you take flour and make tortillas here? Well, that's amazing. That sounds hilarious. That's a, that's a fucking. Oh my fucking That's a real. God. That's a real quote. Or there's oh, another great man. one where he goes to a cafe and he's like, "I see you have a picture of Elvis on the wall. Did he ever come here? No, oh, you're just God. a fan of Elvis. Well, that's great. <laughs> it's it's oh, the fucking God. best. It's the. It's, hey, well, it awesome too. Yeah. Some shit. It's like him looking at the Carlsbad flower fields and be like, oh, well, no. that's Oh, yeah, so that's a good pretty. point. Part of Carlsbad flower fields. Whoa. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's a lot of that kind of stuff. It's great. I'll, I'll put a link in the description for Huel Hauser's uh, fucking video on tortillas. It's Damn, fucking insane. Yeah, that's a real good point. Holy shit. It's great. Um, let's see. The only other things that I had on that was, uh, oh, they talked about how, uh, what this does for John Jones' legacy. <laughs> Uh, yeah, pound for pound he's, uh, he's toast. Yeah, hundred percent. He's an idiot. Uh, and t- <laughs> how yeah. many years would you? Fuck it. Damn. Yeah, I'd say five. Uh, I, mean, if I think four is what's on the four, table. Four. Fuck you. Yeah. And TJ done. TJ says asks whether uh, John is the biggest bust in UFC history, and it's like hard to argue with at this <sighs> point. Dude, I I think he's. I'll sit right now, because I, I. To be fair, I'll be right now. I'll be real. I don't want to talk about it after this week. He's an idiot. No, I'm. He's done fantastic as far as what he did performance wise, but. Uh, the fact that this comes out now it's happened two other times dude you know what I think he's been doing roids his whole yeah. career it's, it sure seems that way there's a there's a rumor of him hiding under the cage when the it's testers came rumor. back in the day and you know what I'm, I'm done with Don Don's yeah uh, I am too did I enjoy his performances yeah of course right but you know what he cheated it's been proven yep. that's it I'm sorry I'm done dude yeah, I'm with you on that. Uh, good for Daniel Cormier getting his belt back. I'm, I know I would be frustrated in his position. We'll say this now because we'll get out of the way. Yes, I'd be very fucking frustrated yeah. if I was Daniel Cormier. And Daniel Cormier has, of course, like <laughs> always, the most respectful and it's, legit it, post it, of all time. Let's about get it. this out of the way because we're going to talk about the Maymac fight. What would ha- What do you think should happen in the light heavyweight division right now? Should Cormier just fight Gus? I think so. I don't yeah. think the, and he you should give him, Gus uh, to. You give him. You give no time to the winner of uh, that fight. No. Oh uh, yeah, you could give no time to the winner of that right? or the winner of uh, who's good to share fighting. Oh yeah, that's what I'm fighting. Who the fuck is he fighting? Whoa, what the fuck? He's fighting uh, somebody He's legit. Fighting. I don't remember. We'll find out. We'll yeah. find out. But right now. Like they said, most like it's Definitely. DC. And I would like to see that run back, yeah. and those dudes both deserve it. Um, the only other podcast I want to give a shout out to was Fights Gone By, the May Mac edition uh, from Jack Slack. That's right. He, he of course, uh, is not has vocally not been a fan of this fight for a long time. Uh, here's a here's here's a great quote that I think perfectly sums up this uh, this fight and my feelings about it as well. I think the fight is a crock of shit, but I think there's going to be some interesting lessons from it. I think that's a great point about it. Um, and the only other points he makes is about like Connor's style and uh, stance causing Floyd, whether Connor's stance and style will cause Floyd issues, um, and the fallacy of Floyd against Southpaws. Uh, and then he also briefly mentions how Connor normally uses the left high kick to stop opponent's head movement, which is going to play a huge factor in this one because, of course, Can't Floyd is known for head movement and Connor is not known for. Like, a lot of times you stop head movement. Uh, with, uh, on an opposite stance fighter by trying to constantly throw that lead hook, but Connor does. Connor just uses his lead hook to set up his left. He doesn't really like have a sharp snapping lead hook like a lot of people. So yeah, I think it'll be interesting. But uh, I I just really like technical breakdown he gave, and I thought it was uh well informed. So. I think that's pretty much it. The only other thing is uh, I did a little bit of homework this week, Chris, that I'm kind of proud of because no one else did. Uh, no, have you checked the USADA site? Because you know they're getting te- Floyd and Connor are both getting tested, right? Oh, I'm surprised. So USADA right. has tested Floyd and Connor twelve times each, like in leading this cal- up to this in this calendar year. No, quarter three. Oh wow! Just so in- quarter three, probably about May to now. Uh, yeah. July probably. July to now. 
Uh, because, yeah, Connor has gotten tested five times in quarters one and two. No. Quarter... He, Connor got tested once in quarter one, twice in quarter two, and three times in quarter three for MMA. And then they've both been tested 12 say, times I'll for I'll just boxing. say this. Some of this new results, but based on just the figure, the style, and how it's in the fight, honestly, dude, I feel like McGurk would be the person who would never take steroids just based on his figure and everything, right? You know what I mean? Don't get me wrong. Anyone gets hurt, but just like I, am I opinion, like McGregor? He no, there's no way that dude takes steroids. He he's like it's the dude as they come, in my opinion. Yeah. As far as like how he presents himself, how he conditions. Yeah. Same with Mayweather. No, yeah, they don't take. I don't. So there's I, no fucking. And way. I think they're mostly doing it for show. Like I yeah. think both of them just want each other to like. I think it's, it's McGregor's body style too. He's yeah. too lanky, dude. There's no way he takes steroids. The guy is just as natural as they come. He's well, it's slowed down guy. probably. Yeah, and I give. I give McGregor, he's one of my favorite fighters to watch, and we'll talk about yeah, it more. You know, he's fantastic. So, yeah, no, I, I'm glad for you, Sada. I'm glad that you, Sada, is around. Thank you. You yeah. know, and I, I, I think, yeah, I won't say anything more. We'll get into it we'll next We'll talk segment. about it in yeah. this next segment, yeah. uh, but why don't we go ahead and uh, we'll go out on this uh, where we hear uh, DJ talk about. Actually, you know what? I was going to say we should hear DJ talk about how it's hard to fail a drug test, but that was pretty much the whole quote. So instead, we're going to talk about the MMA Viva section, or we're going to hear the, uh, not MMA Viva section, the MMA Viva depressed us fucking boxing and MMA edition, or whatever it's called, uh, where they talk about Butterbean and how to fight oh Butterbean, because that was, it's real, it's real great. Also, here's how he is like a Ninja Turtle villain. What's the name of this villain? Krang. Krang from Ninja Turtles. Congrats. What if instead of pointing at a wet spot in the canvas there, Butterbean was pointing at a spot where his foot had just gone through the plywood? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, <laughs> the ring is broken. Oh, you, you know what he's built like? You know what it is? What? Huh. Can you brought up the Ninja Turtles thing? So remember, I, I think, was it Ninja Turtles or was it Captain Planet? The guy who had the head, there was the brain in a gut. <laughs> <laughs> like, Krang. Oh, that was Turtles. Yeah, Krang. Krang. Yeah. He's built like Krang, but with the brain head is just like... Like, yeah. there is no head on top, it's just the brain in the yeah, gut. in the shoulders. <laughs> he's not just a fat guy, like, he's so broad. Look at his back. Yeah. He's he's such a strange man. And Rob Rotten is having a devilishly hard time figuring out how to beat this man who can't grapple. <laughs> but Butterbean is also just taking jabs from Rob Rotten. How does yeah, he even like defend his face? I mean, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. He's got, yeah, he's got no like. Can he? He just can't put his hands up there. He can't reach his face. Like <laughs> his shoulders are set too far away from his chin. <laughs> oh man, I love him. Ninety pro boxing bouts. <laughs> what? <laughs> like almost all of them. <laughs> We are back. That was a clip of fucking chaos uh, involving Butterbean, which he is uh, known for. So we are going to quickly break down the Bellator 182 Kreshkov versus Injikwani card. Uh, we're only going to talk about a couple of the fights that I am uh, familiar with and kind of interested in because uh, there's a couple names on there that I am uh, pretty hyped to see. And then after that... We'll talk about our uh, thoughts on Connor Floyd, I guess, since we have to. Uh, oh, boy. Um, but we'll go ahead and start on this Bellator 182 card. A couple of names on here that I'm kind of hyped about. Like, Colleen Schneider finally uh, coming over. So, I believe, has she had a fight in Bellator yet? Colleen I think Schneider. she's coming straight out. Oh, no, she has. she's had one yeah. since she came over from Invicta. And that's where she uh, beat Chrissy, Chrissy Daniels by uh, Anaconda in the first so round. So, what is she, like, 135-er? I believe she's a 40... No, yeah, 35-er. You're right. Um, 
out of CSW, although I don't know if she's still with CSW, because she used to date Josh Barnett, and I know they definitely don't date anymore. Um, but she is taking on Kate Jackson. Kate Jackson, I know next to nothing about. Uh, Kate Jackson has fought in BC MMA, LFN, and uh, Cage, uh, CWFC, Cage Warriors, which is pretty cool. Um, I all uh, She's English. Oh, shit, she's a 115-er. Oh my god. So I'm guessing this fight, she's moving up uh, to 135. I'm going with Colleen Schneider, dude. Size matters sometimes. Yeah, me know. too. Wow, that's, uh, this is, uh, this seems like a Scott Coker kind of, uh, kind of situation. He's just like, all right, English chick, can you make white? Oh. I could fucking make white, you fucking what, mate? <laughs> right. Also, I don't know what Birth of the Dragon is here on Sherlock. It's a Bruce Lee movie. It's a Bruce Lee movie. I'm Where he talked about how he kicks all the asses and how he could be any MMA, any MMA fighter. I'm probably going to have to watch that sometime. Uh, Chris Honey. Not in theaters. Oh, I did not expect it to be. <laughs> uh, this next fight's actually great. Chris Honeycutt, uh, the cut, coming off the uh, win over Ben Ryder oh, and shit. the win over Mikel Parlo is taking on uh, Kevin Casey, King Kevin Casey. Ooh, I like Kevin Casey. Who is, uh, of course, coming off, draws. Yeah, coming off the loss to Sam Alvey and had draws to Elvis Mutopcic and uh, Keith Berry. Uh, one fight in to the... Uh, oh, wow, that was on the Sun and Ortiz card. Uh, one fight into his uh, Bellator... His Bellator stint and Chris Honeycutt's a tough out, man. Chris Honeycutt's been fucking people up. Uh, and I think this will be a really fun, scrappy fight. I am probably going to lean Chris Honeycutt on this, just because I think he'll get the better of the striking. I'm, I'm leaning Chris Honeycutt only because he's had three, well, he's had multiple belts or bounce. He's had three wins in a row. Yep, all decisions. Uh, Kevin Cage is a tough guy. I know he's game for probably anyone. Really Super high level class. ground game too. Yeah, hell yeah, very good ground game. I think he's a black belt in jiu yep. so. and he also dates the daughter of Muhammad Ali, or no, the one, one, of, one the, of the daughters, yeah. not the daughter. Whether it's Layla, Every, or it always it's yeah. not Layla. That's what yeah, everybody always yeah. thinks when I Either say Either way, that. impressive on Kevin Casey. Good for him. Uh, but yeah, I think I'm leaning towards Chris Honeycutt on this. Yeah, I, I got to go with experience. I am as well, uh, although I do like Kevin Casey a lot, and uh, I'd like to see him start a, a new run in Bellator. I think it'd be fun. Uh, Noad Lahat is taking on Henry Corrales, which is going to be a fun fight. Noad Lahat is uh, coming off of his win over Lloyd Cotter, Carter. I don't know why I said that weird. Uh, Lloyd Carter. Yeah, technical submission by RNC, which means he went the fuck to sleep. Or it means the ref stopped it early. Um, and then also has the uh, RNC over Scott Cleave. Last loss was to Diego Rivas. Uh, he's taking on Henry Corrales, who is a beast out of the MMA lab. He's coming off a win over Cody Bollinger and the loss to Patricio Ferreira uh, Pitbull. And uh, lost to Daniel Strauss and Emmanuel Sanchez, which, man, that's a tough fucking lineup. Uh, but he seems to be getting caught by his subs uh, by high-level people. Which, taking on a dude like Noah Lahat, who's catching a lot of RNCs, sounds kind of dangerous. Mm, this is kind of a tough pick for me. Mm. Uh, I, I have no idea. So, I'm going to go... I'm going to go Henry Corrales just off. Uh, he got that win over Cody Bollinger with the body shot, and he's out of the MMA lab. Uh, which you gotta imagine his Benson Henderson. Yeah, you gotta imagine his submission Phoenix, defense is getting yeah. higher and higher with every fight, especially if he's losing by uh, cho- by especially by guillotines. You gotta figure that's something because uh, Benson, you gotta realize, is the guy who was fighting a bunch of dudes with nasty guillotines back in the day. Yeah. Uh, so and Benson got caught by Anthony with a guillotine. Yeah. So you gotta figure they are uh, well versed in guillotine defense by this point. So I'm going to lean that way, but I'm not super positive either way. I do know Sinead Oak... Not Sinead. Sinead over... Oak, Sinead... God damn it. Sinead Kavanaugh. Wow. There we go. 0 for 3. Out of SBG Ireland. Uh, I know... Uh, what's his face? He has been hyping her up all week. Uh, John Danner. John Kavanaugh? Nope. John Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh. Thank you. 
Not of the death. His death daughter. Squad. Just kidding. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, so she's coming off the loss in uh, Bellator 173 back in February by unanimous, unanimous decision. She's taken on Arlene Blenko, Anger Fish. Fucking Australia. Right? Uh, coming off of an AFC win, Australian Fighting Championship, whatever that is. Also, she fought in Sledgehammer. To Rhiannon Thompson yeah. and Janie Harding. Yep. Oh, actually, she and she had a decent Bellator stint, although she did lose to Julia Budd and Marlos, Marlos Cohen. Yeah. Uh, to be fair, those are two fucking monsters in that sport. In the sport, also has wins over big names like Faith Van Duen. Uh, well, actually, has a, also a loss to Faith Van Duen earlier in her career that she avenged. So clearly, a tough chick. Uh, man, this is kind of an interesting fight. I don't know much about either of these girls, so it's hard for me to pick. Uh, just based off of the matchup, I would lean probably towards Arlene Blenko, just off of experience. I think I'm going with her. But uh, I don't know. I haven't seen either of these. I mean, I've seen them fight, but I, I couldn't recall any of it. I've definitely seen uh, Sinead at the, uh, I think it was the, the, uh, what's the Grove fight. Uh, nope, that was the other girl. Uh, oh, King Mo versus Ishii, I saw. McGeary versus McDermott, I saw. Um, so I definitely saw some of them, but yeah, I'm, I'm not ultra confident in either one. Uh, but I think it'll be fun. By the way, uh, there's oh, Shlomenko ad. versus Grove. There's an ad for that movie tomorrow. I did see that Julia Bud fight. I like how they have it in UFC style. It says Bruce Lee versus Wong Jack Khan. That's fucking hilarious. For Wong Jack Man. It was yeah. comedy. Look at that. Oh my god. Sometimes Wong get jacked Wong Jack Man. Wong yeah. Wong Jack Man. I guess we better go to the movie tomorrow, bro. I, Not. I guess. Uh, Georgie Karakanyan taking on Daniel Pineda. That'll be a fun fight. Uh, Georgie Karakanyan coming off of the uh, win, loss to Emmanuel Sanchez and win over, oh boy, Kirill Medodowski. Yeah. I'm butchering that. And then the win over Bubba Jenkins uh, via KO, which was nasty in the first round. And then that lost Pat Curran back in the day. Uh, taking on Daniel Pineda. Daniel Pineda is uh, just coming off the win over Mark Dickinson. Dickman. Dickman. Wow. Uh, I, I just didn't <laughs> believe that would actually be the one. Dickman. I, I saw it and I was like, there's no way it's just Dickman. Um, Mark Dickman. Yeah, and then he has the loss of Manuel Sanchez and he has uh, three wins. Johnny in, Carson. Yeah, win, three wins in LFC, including uh, Leonard Garcia. Uh, also... Uh, came out of the UFC with losses to da- Diego Brandao and Robert Whiteford. Uh, Kirk Hanian's tough as shit. They're both coming. They both have losses to Manuel Sanchez. Uh, this is a pretty tough fight, man. I think I'm going to go with here. George Kirk Hanian. Think so? Yeah. I think that's probably the smart pick. I could see that for sure. Um, I could really see this going either way. I think it's going to be scrappy. I. I I, I don't know what to think about it. Yeah, I'll go with that, too. Fuck it. Actually, you know what? For fun, I'll go with Pineda. Because I have not. no stakes in this at all. Uh, AJ McKee, who has been... I've heard that name. Who is... Uh, people are pretty hyped on. Of course, uh, the kid of Antonio McKee. Uh, who's been getting some fucking solid matchups. Uh, wins over Brandon Phillips. And his last win in, by head kick. A minute and 15 in against Dominic... Wow, not Dominic. Uh, Dominic Mazzotta. Mazzotta? Jesus. Mazzotta. Uh, he has taken on... This is not oh, this no. dude's page. What is... What the fuck, sure dog? Here we go. Blair Tugman. Tug Weird. Speedman. Yeah, From Blair... Tropic Thunder. Blair Tugman coming off wins over Walter Smith Colt... or Coito. Coito. Uh, and a win over Tom English, which that was a good fight. Um, Blair the Bull Shark Tugman. Yeah, I gotta go AJ McKee. I mean, they they just keep. I'm setting going up, AJ McKee too. They just keep setting up AJ McKee to get a win. Uh, yeah. Because Scott Coker kind of he doesn't pride match make, but he almost pride match makes. Uh, Brennan Ward is taking on Fernando Gonzalez. Yep, the Minifee Maniac, and which is a pretty good I am name. Going Brennan Ward. I know he Irish got. Brennan Ward. Yeah. I know he got, he got killed by Paul Daly. I know he Daly. got. Yeah, not to fuck up with Paul Daly, but Brennan Paul Daly's Ward a beast, though. He's pretty badass. And he's tough as fucking nails. 
Uh, of course, he has a win over Saad Wad and the uh, loss to Chris Santos, the male one. Uh, let's see. Or Chris Cyborg, the male one, sorry. Uh, Fernando Gonzalez coming off the win over Brandon Gertz, which is a big win. And the loss to Michael Page, which going to split decision with Michael Page is not bad. Plus, wins over Gilbert Smith. Damn, I'm sleeping on this dude, evidently. Uh, I saw the fucking Conan Bud fight. I have so much trouble actually having recollection of Bellator fights. They Wait, just blend Gilbert in everything else tough? with me. This is going to be a really good Gilbert fight. Gilbert Smith from Tough, right? Yeah. I always forget about that. This is going to be a really good fight. Uh, out of Team Quest is uh, Fernando Gonzalez, and out of uh, Rivera Athletic Center and Whaling City Boxing is Irish Brennan Ward. This is going to be a close fucking fight, man. They're going to throw the fuck down. Um, I think I got Brennan Ward, but I don't know why. I'm going to go Fernando Gonzalez just off the fact that he... If you're going to decision with a dude like Michael Page, I feel like you might be able to have enough yeah. defense to get past Brennan Ward. Um, and I feel like he'll, he'll steal a decision if it goes that long. That's good uh, plus, a win over Brennan Gertz is a big deal. And that was only back in March of this year. So I'm going to lean that way, uh, but not off of any recollection of his actual fights because uh, I'm not great at that. I do know Chidi and Jakawani blew weight again for the third time in a row this week. Today. Third time in a row. Third time in a row. Uh, blew it against Melvin Gallard and against uh, Andre Flalo. What did he go 175? What did he go 175? Uh, no, the Melvin Gallard fight was at a catch weight of 175, and they both blew weight and came out like almost 180. Oh, yeah. So that that's how. I'm saying like what was it this goes. fight? Because it's close to 170. Yeah, it's uh. The, uh, no, what did he come in for this one? Yeah, I think he came in at like uh, at least one seventy five. Oh. oh my god! Bruce Lee, fucking Sherdog with the autoplay ads. Bruce oh Lee, my god, Andre Koreshkov coming off the loss of Diego. Sl- Di- god damn, it. Douglas, Douglas Lima, Lima. man. <laughs> Diego Lima, of course that one, uh, and then the uh, win over Benson Henderson because he's a goddamn beast. Uh, man, that was a that was a. <sighs> this is a tough fight to pick. Yeah, I'm going with uh, Corish Gob, dude. I am too. I just think. Uh, in I don't G- know. I, I think Injaquani is going to get wrestled. This motherfucker who blows away, I got to go with the guy that doesn't blow away as much. So. I, I just think he's going to get wrestle fucked. Uh, yeah. I think he's basically going to get Benson Henderson, honestly. Yeah. Um, it's pretty much what I think. The only the only thing that worries me a little bit is that uh, Kreshkov's coming off that knockout loss of Diego mm. to Douglas Lima. God damn it. And yeah. uh, that is... Douglas Lima has uh, been fucking people up lately. So, yeah. man, that's a that's a tough uh, tough out. But overall, I'm, uh, I'm leaning towards uh, Kreshkov for sure. Um, and that, I guess, leads us to fucking Connor Floyd. All right, so... Uh, uh, so Chris, we uh, for a long okay. time we refused to admit okay. this would ever happen. Okay, I'm still surprised it would ever happen. Uh, I'm less surprised that the athletic commission has no soul and just wants money, and so they approved 185 or the uh, eight ounce boxing glove. Uh, God damn it. Okay, so okay. So, so Chris, how do you, how do you see this? Boxing match going. Okay, so I'll just say this right away. I was a big boxing fan, boxing aficionado before I ever really got into mixed martial arts. Right, right. mostly for, through yeah. Fight Night. Okay. Uh, as far as boxing goes, I first started watching boxing when I think I was about 15, 16, so 2006, 2007. So that's like when uh, I started watching it. I kind of watched Sugar Shane Mosley and the Go Kodo kind of wars, you know, the kind of, yeah. uh, you know, Juan Juan Marquez fights, you know, first when he fought Pacquiao, like an 08, 09, that kind of thing, right? Yeah. So mixed martial arts didn't come for me until like 2010 when BJ Penn, I think, first fought Frankie Edgar. I think that was the was that the That's a, was that the second time they fought? I think it was the first no. time in twenty ten. Was I that mean, the no, the Abu Dhabi tw- card? I think it was twenty ten. I think it was twenty ten. That the card first, was, your was the first, first year they fought. Yeah, I think the first real okay, Ugh. the first real UFC fight that I paid attention to, I'm pretty sure was Frankie Edgar BJ Japan won in like twenty in Abu Dhabi that terrible fight. I think it was twenty ten. That you that was so that was the same card with. Uh, 
Anderson Silva and uh, Damian Maya, where they didn't do shit the entire no, time. No, that too. was the same card. Yeah, it was. No, dude, no, it, was it definitely was. Was it really? Yeah. So you might be thinking of the second fight. Fuck. No, that's well, that no, doesn't line up because I remember it was a goddamn fight. The first fucking fight where Frank Edgar won. He's a fucking champ. Yeah. Well, that yeah, but that was Abu Dhabi. So that was the yeah, Anderson Damian like one. 2010, maybe it was the same card, yeah. Yeah, I guess I can pull it up. I don't know why okay, I keep either way, it. Either way, I've been watching boxing before that. All I'll say is, you ask me, Chris, what's your official prediction? Yeah. My official prediction, I'd say for this fight, Floyd Mayweather decision? You know? I, I think it's really just a fight where he just kind of dances around and doesn't get hit and he just kind of takes yeah, his counter Yeah, it's the Abu Dhabi fight. You know, was it 2010? Yeah. Yeah, I was right. You yeah. nailed that. Uh, yeah. E- either way, what what's You're my saying... official fight for this? You know what? I think it's one of those fights where Mayweather is able to just dance around, dictate the fight his style, and do his own thing. I don't really think that's going to happen in this fight. McGregor, what's he going to do? Yeah, he's going to come out swinging. Yes. Is he athletic? Fuck yeah. He's a very good athlete. Yes. <laughs> Can he hit Mayweather? Fuck yeah. Of course he could fucking knock him silly. Whatever all the shit. Do I think it's going to happen? No. Mayweather has faced Miguel Cotto. He's faced Ricky Hatton. He's faced Benny fucking Pacquiao, dude. He's taking shit on the chin. M- McGregor could fucking dream and, of. And the closest and he's and ever... And 10-ounce gloves, and bro. the closest he's ever come to getting dropped was his glove barely scraping the mat. Exactly. Yes, yeah, so you know what? My official pick for this fight is Floyd Mayweather Jr., Unanimous decision win. The same thing as he always does. When was the last time he had a knockout? Victor or uh, uh, was it Victor or Guerrero? Well, if Ortiz? you count the Ortiz one where he What's knocked him face? out after the head, but Omar Guerrero, what the fuck his name was, where he fucking looked it up and he's like, bro, you ready to fight? And I think that was Ortiz, I'm ready to wasn't fight. it? And he's like, fucking boom, you know? Oh, like, yeah. It was Guerrero or it was Guerrero. Omar Guerrero. What I think what it was Ortiz was, was the one with the uh, headbutt controversy where he knocked him out. I don't know his fucking name. The guy, Guerrero, was the guy where he looked at fucking <laughs> Goddamn pull it up. I have it right here. And he looked at him and he said, you ready to fight? And he's like, I guess. And he fucking knocked him the fuck out. <laughs> Guerrero was the guy he knocked out. Not Ortiz. Victor Ortiz, no. Was the guy he, he knocked out Ortiz? Guerrero. He knocked a guy named Guerrero. Robert Guerrero, yeah. Fucking knockout, dude. That's a unanimous decision. Yeah. Fucking knocked him the fuck out. Robert a, Guerrero went like this. That's Robert a, Guerrero. Chris. That's unanimous decision. Well, who the fuck did he knock out? Victor it Ortiz. It was Ortiz. Okay. Like I said. Yeah. Okay, God fucking Which, damn it. that was off that headbutt-related incident. Remember? No, it, dude, it I thought Ortiz was this. I thought Ortiz was this for, for me. It was, hey, Victor, look over here. <laughs> and Ortiz was like, he said, ref, are we good to go? Yeah, and, and then he, he didn't say shit, which means yeah. he's like, fucking boom. It just looked like a right straight. That was, but that was right after headbutt. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Sorry, excuse me, everyone. Listen, So I last... got Guerrero and Ortiz mixed up. You yeah. know because it was, I felt like it was kind of close in between. His last Clearly, big, I was wrong. His last big legit knockout was Ricky Hatton. Oh no, Ricky Hatton went like eight rounds. Ricky or ten rounds. Yeah. yeah. Ricky Hatton fucking held his goddamn fucking fight in. Ricky Hatton's great for, for sure. What he did, yeah. But as far as this fight goes, McGregor Mayweather. Yeah, dude, I see Mayweather just fucking with McGregor the whole time. Eight ounce, eight ounce gloves. I don't give a fuck. It's gonna go the whole twelve rounds. It's gonna be a boring fight for all you aficionados who like the fucking exciting fight. I am here to disappoint you right now. It is not gonna be fun for you, except for maybe a couple of exchanges. Why well, do you like defense? Will McGregor yeah. tag him? Yeah, probably like a couple times. But people don't realize, dude, Floyd Mayweather has a fucking chin, and it's gonna be one for of those sure. things. He'll get tagged like three times. You know, well, right? It, but the thing is, is Floyd. If you catch Floyd with something, you're no longer can hit him with that punch. Oh he, yeah, that's he it. Because he'll adjust. Going to adjust, adjust. To that. Yeah. Thank you. He's the best at that. So that's my official prediction. My official prediction is it's gonna go fucking twelve rounds, and Mayweather will win. That's it. So I'm I'm mostly agree with you. Although here's the difference: I don't think Connor has a cardio for twelve rounds. Yeah, I, I see that. And in boxing, refs will step in if you stop defending yourself, um, way more than in MMA. 
in MMA, you can still try and clinch That's up. That's true. Or dive for a ill-fated takedown with your head forward. Or back against uh, the cage. Well, I, the I was more referring to the first Nate Diaz yeah. fight. But, uh, yeah, in boxing, if you aren't can't hold your hands up to protect yourself anymore, they're not just going to let you keep getting hit in the face. Uh, so I I see probably a referee stoppage TKO, like, eight round eight or so yeah, I think the problem that is makes sense. I think Connor comes out hard throwing at Floyd's gloves Connor doesn't do the math on the fact that how scoring works in boxing is if you throw ten punches and nine of them land on my gloves I have nine points and you have one point yeah. and I don't think he's going to get that math because I think he just believes in the knockout so much um, and I think that's going to just tear at his cardio along with the body shots Floyd lands every time Connor starts leaning forward from g- gassing. Uh, I think that just adds up over rounds, and eventually Floyd just starts opening up so hard on the body and uh, going upstairs that eventually Connor's just not even holding his gloves up. Yeah. And uh, they wave it off either between rounds or uh, when Connor just stops defending. Because um, th- like that, that second Nate Diaz fight. If that was a boxing match, I think that boxing refs would have stepped in on parts of that third of course, round. Of course, Because of how bad Conor was getting lit up and looking gassed. Especially, like, yeah. Dude, he looked lit up against the goddamn fence. Just, he was kind of defenseless. He kind of had to take a bunch of heavy breaths. His hands were down. Yeah. Uh, some I things, mean, yeah. some things I did hear on podcast that I think are really interesting to look out for are things like uh, per, I think Floyd, as I've heard a couple people say, and I agree with. I don't think he's going to use nearly as many jabs as he normally does. I think he's going to throw dumb. a lot more uh, lead rights because he has a very quick lead right, and Connor loads up a lot. With I forgot his left. Floyd's an orthodox guy, right? I know Connor he switches a little bit. Like Connor does, um, which the stance switching will definitely come into play in this fight a lot too. Depending on how much both of them do it, I think it'll be a big factor, or it could be a big factor, I should say. Um, <clears throat> but Floyd mostly stands out of orthodox. Every once in a while, out of a clinch, he'll step out of the clinch and left, yeah. and then throw a long straight left, and then step back into regular stance. Yeah, uh, and do well, he throws a lot of darts, Dom Cruz, Willie Pep style. Yeah, and, I was going to say, because I saw nobody in mind. They asked me, oh, besides, you know, Floyd Mayweather, who's the most evasive boxer you can think of? I'm like, oh, Willie <laughs> Pep. You know, yeah, Ma- Willie Pep's the Muhammad dude. Muhammad Ali. No one's ever with won around style. without yeah, yeah, striking yeah. like Willie Pep. Yeah, has. exactly. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm super... I'm actually starting to get more excited for this fight. Again, like I've said from the beginning, mostly because I'm excited to see how bad people melt down while watching it. Um, which is why I kind of want to go to a bar because I want to see people have a meltdown in person. But you don't want to get stabbed there too. Well, and I, but, well, right when I'm laughing so fucking hard. Um, and also, yeah, I think it'll be more fun watching guys like uh, our buddy Trevor, who's been on this podcast, just be so upset with what's happening. <laughs> just be like, oh, he he clearly had nothing from the beginning. Like, actually, I think Trevor's no, actually on our side. Trevor would be on our yeah. side for sure, bro. Because Trevor's a boxing... <laughs> he's the old boxing head, too. No, he would dad. definitely would be in the fact of me when it's going. But, no, yeah. But uh, I think it'll be... Uh, I think it'll be a lot less competitive than people think. I think Connor's going to throw a lot at Floyd's gloves for three rounds and then start slowing down so... Honestly, insanely. I'll say this. I think it's actually more entertaining than Mayweather Pacquiao. You might call me insane. Mm, that doesn't but take I much. I only though. say that because I think Connor's going to come Connor's harder. Connor's going to yeah. throw a fucking bomb, yeah. dude. Like in the beginning, and I think it's this is going to be like he's going to whoa, 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 whoa. You know what I mean? Like Connor's going to come out throwing bombs, but I think he's just going to hit all gloves the entire time. Of course, of course. Uh, which, uh, the only way I see... So, here's how I see Connor winning this fight. If Floyd breaks his hand in the first two rounds, yes. Connor wins this fight. Yes. That's about it. Uh, or, I guess, if okay. Connor hits a so, crazy left hand, this thing. it's possible. If Connor wins, did they do a sequel? <sighs> yes. Unfortunately. Yeah. Yes. Not only do they do a sequel, but Connor will never fight in the UFC, in the UFC again. Nope. Or no in point. MMA. There's no point. Uh, and I agree. Wouldn't you do the same Connor fucking will thing? Also, wouldn't you do the same thing? Connor, yes, I would. I bet you I Connor will also buy enough lawyers to get himself out of the UFC contract. So that oh, they he, he have will nothing, be the UFC. So that he makes all of the money off the oh. next fight. Oh, he will be the UFC. Because if you notice, Dana said multiple times there's no rematch clause. Yeah. I, th- I think that 
like subtly means that Dana is not going to be included if there is a rematch clause <laughs> yeah. also. Because I think if they writ- if they wrote a rematch clause into that, that would mean the UFC automatically has a part of it. Yep. And if you're Conor McGregor, you have to be thinking, I don't want to give half my money away again. Yeah. Uh, and so I think he tries to Floyd Mayweather style buy himself out of his contract. Yeah. Uh, which will be interesting to see how that fucking goes. Or he put six as crazy lawyers on the UFC and they... Uh, go to war which would be even worse because that means no one fights for three years and then uh Floyd comes back when he's fucking 50 and they Connor finally gets a win um yeah I, I it's about all I have to say on this fight man I don't know uh I do recommend people checking out the Bellator card on Friday though I think that's gonna be a lot more entertaining uh, also, I think Miguel Cotto is fighting on Saturday. I think you're right. I think the HBO is counter programming this fight, no which is insane. Remembers. No, I swear to God, it's no one remembers the Miguel Cotto fighting. Move. Which, by the way, Miguel Cotto punches way harder than Conor McGregor. You yeah. That. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that that'll be interesting. Um, but I guess that's about it for this week. I mean, we Chris and I have been dreading this this uh, this breakdown for a while. And hey, let it be said, like I I'm not rooting against Conor McGregor. I just don't see a way for him to win. Really, outside right of a crazy. I'll say this right now. I am rooting for McGregor because I think Mayweather is an asshole. Well, he's a piece of shit for piece sure. Piece of shit. I will always root for McGregor. Anyone against Mayweather. I'll say it right now. So, Conor McGregor wins. Uh, except for Manny Pacquiao. He's actually a big, low-key, a bigger piece of shit. He's actually uh, sentencing gay people to jail in his country okay, as a politician. Well, yeah. so. Okay, well, I'll say they're equal only because beating women is really bad. Plus, well, you know what I mean. I'll just say they're equal. They're, yeah. they're equally as bad. Yeah, that, I'll just say that. Both horrible. Because I'm not going to make an argument. But, either way, they're both pieces of shit. I did, I'll say this right now. For everyone listening, Conor McGregor, do I want him to win? Fuck yeah, that'd be hilarious. Except for every Conor Except fan is going to become game. unbearable. Yeah. No, Twitter see, is going to be unusable no, for a I month. I ignore them already. I ignore Marindy, bro. Dude, but you understand that no, no, everything no. will be Conor. Oh, well, I know. But it's fine because it's easy to know him. Just don't listen. It's easy now when there's only it's like 60% yeah. of the people. Uh, yeah. Not a No, I know. Remember I told you there's a guy on YouTube, on Instagram called Connor Doing Things. And it's like the YouTube guy. Yep. I get all that bullshit. Yeah, you motherfuckers are going to do your thing. Whatever. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not concerned about that. I only would want Floyd to lose because that'd be fucking pure comedy. Your first loss and it gets a dude is not even a pro. I'm sorry. It would, it's just fucking chaos. It would break boxing. That, that like, is chaos, well, dude. And what's even better is I, I secretly kind of do want Connor to win, mostly oh, I because want win. Yeah, I want to see Nate and Nick Diaz get a hell of boxing fights. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. Because they deserve it. Yeah, they, why not? And they would box the face off of a lot of decent dudes. Like, not top elite tier motherfuckers but some they would pros. box the face yeah. off of some Fuck like yeah, medium rank pros Fuck uh, yeah. and and Nate Diaz also this week on a podcast had one of the greatest lines of all time where he was talking about like people doubting McGregor and he's like listen you one dimensional boxing fucks yeah. if this is a real fight it's not even a fucking question the only reason yeah, this McGregor is even win. a conversation is because we're playing your stupid rules <laughs> which I, the phrase you one dimensional boxing fucks uh, it goes down in history along with uh, fucking these things happen in MMA and a couple other I mean, ideas, to be so fair if it's a real lines. fight McGregor wins I mean, oh it's, it's really not even a question yeah. we I saw mean, we saw plenty of fights on yep. the uh and the uh, vivisection depressed us. Just that, like uh, I told my buddy Trevor, dude, we went to Blarney, right, for trivia. That was fine. I'll just say this right now, okay? Me? I'm not a fighter. Do I come as a fighter? No. Do I know how to defend myself? I would say so, yeah, because I did a couple months of boxing, kickboxing, blah, 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 right? You can say, fuck you, Chris, you're tiny, right? This is thing. Hey, I see Mike is tiny and he's fighting a ninja, Chris. This, don't, this, don't get down on yourself. This is, this is I see thing. Mike weighs 135. This he's thing. I won't name his name because I don't know his name, but since I've been to Blarney Stones, there's been this one fool that I've seen is there. Gosh. I went there a couple weeks, like say a couple months ago, right? These two motherfuckers I've seen in Claremont, 
They talked about, oh, bro, I want to do body shots right now. Do you want to fight someone? I walked by him. You know me. I'm calm as a fucking monk. They looked at me, and they're like, bro, I want to fucking fight someone. And like, they both looked at me, and I just laughed. Thank God I didn't do anything, because what else are they going to do, right? But, yeah, it's, it's fucking goofy. <laughs> so, speaking of crazy... Uh, fight non-fights like this weekend's card. I guess we'll wrap this here. Uh, but, oh, boy, this Conor McGregor uh, fucking Floyd Mayweather fight. Uh, get ready for a weekend of chaos. Go, McGregor. I hope you beat Floyd because it'd be chaos. It'd be fucking great. It'll be real oh, crazy. Man, it'll be fucking hilarious. Oh, my God. Barney will be giving away beers all night or something. I don't, I don't, I won't be there. Yeah, I might actually go there if Connor wins. You know what? Okay. If Connor wins, I might go to Blarney. I'm Blarney's. still deciding where I'm going to be. Actually, yeah, we might be at your place. I forgot. God damn it, yes. Yeah. Possibly. Yeah. So maybe we'll, we'll go to Blarney you if they win. You did say if it's Fight Pass. You did say Fight Pass, Yeah, right? you can buy it through Fight like, Pass. Like, is that actually 100%? Yeah. Okay, you know what? You're probably going to be at my place. Because <laughs> yeah. that's probably going to happen. We'll probably do that. So yeah. we'll go ahead and wrap this segment here. But uh, as you guys know, you can find us on uh, Twitter. Chris, what's your Twitter? Well, mine is at Chris Affer. There you <laughs> yeah, go. Yeah. You can check that out. Two Fs, one D. Uh, two Fs, yeah. M A D A F F E R. There you go. Uh, you can also find our show Twitter, T S O V Pod. You can send an email to the show, S O V Pod at gmail.com or Chris the Sound of Hit us up. Let us know what we should be listening to, what MMA podcast we're missing out on, and how we're fuck faces. Um, also, you guys should subscribe on iTunes if you could. Uh, give us a positive rating. That helps us in the rankings and all that bullshit and helps us get some uh, uh, a little bit of attention to the show. Also, we have a YouTube channel where we upload everything as well. Actually, in a little bit higher audio quality because it's cheaper or free. Uh, so... You can check that out. I think we're just the Sound of Violence podcast. If you Google that on YouTube, it'll show up. Um, and you can, yeah, give us a like, subscribe on all that. It would be much appreciated. Uh, so that is it for this week's Conor McGregor Mayweather Chaos. We will be back next week with our recap of this fight uh, and how we think And it- the preview... Of Volkov Struve. UFC Rotterdam. Which, yeah. god damn it, I wish that was me last year. Right? right? When why I was in have, Rotterdam. God damn it. Literally the same time last year almost. I know. Like, uh, I remember you talking about that. It was, yeah. it was like a year before that. But whatever, you know. For so, real. I, I guess like every year for them. So that's fine. Yeah. So uh, look forward to that. And we'll also talk a lot about the, our uh, Mag War League that we're in, which Fuck is the yeah, Fantasy dude. MMA dude, League. Dude, I'm stoked now. My god damn it. Colby Covington. Let's fucking go. Yeah. Dude. And I think I have two fighters on this upcoming one. So we'll talk about all that. But uh, like I said, hit us up. Let us know what you should be listening to. We love you all. Thank you for listening. And until next time, everybody, go do something decadent. We out.